Okay, we got a big old catfish here. Big old catfish with a big old head. I, I got a reproduction do and the head is smaller. The body's bigger on the other catfish, but the head is smaller. So it's kind of weird. Uh, sometimes they're that way. I got me a marker. And of course I know where the fins are. There's a All the way to the end, basically. This guy. There's the fin uh, thing, my bob, right here. Well, there's the fin. Of course, that goes up into the head. And we got this other side, which is also getting a mark. And I'm not trying to angle in, I'm trying to go straight down to get a more accurate. Uh, you know, representation, you know. Okay. Okay, uh, about right here, actually. Yeah. Actually, right there, yeah. There, depending on how much curve you get to the tail. Right there. Okay. Yeah, this stuff don't want to mark on a on a fish line for sure. Okay, there. Then you draw the rest of him out. Okay. He's going to be a left turn. Go that way with him. Try to get about the same length. Control the slime a little bit where I can mark with my marker, you know. That's going to be the front of it. It's going to be kind of blunt because you got such a fat head. I want to be able to penetrate the brain pan a little bit, so I'll go like that. Go like that. There. Come in there. There's fin junctures for the fins. You know where they come out, so. And then you got your belly. Top of the head, yeah, right there. Get, make sure you get this real good on this side. Okay. 
Okay, well, that's pretty good. Okay, I've got my profile, uh, got my side view. Um, right here is where the big fin is going to go. Um, a lot of times, if you don't incorporate it in, you can always put clay in there when you mount the fish. Right here at where the fin juncture is, where it goes up, you can add a little bit there. Um, and I think we got something here. So that's where it ends, right there. Then you got your belly right here. Well, then we got your pelvic fins right here. That's where that juncture is there. So. Okay, that's pretty much it right there. Just kind of cut them out as a template to kind of just uh, know what we got. Okay, now here's the uh, you got the top view and the side view. Uh, here's like the area where it's going to go up into the burning pan. So we got this right here. And it's going to be a left turn. I want to make sure it's a left turn. And then you got the fin juncture. Oops, it's tearing. Okay, it's a little bit damp. Okay, right here I may incorporate a little bit of a little bit of a bump. Can always add clay also. Which is another uh, thing you can do. That excess cardboard out of the way here at the head. Basically, we're just cutting up, cutting this stuff out. Where the adipose fin is going to go. Yeah, that's wild. They got an adipose fin just like a trout. Who'd have thought? Let me trim this up a little bit. There's a side. We'll try to set that on a big old piece of foam. Now we're going to go ahead and get the head. There's going to be a left turn, so he's going to be curved to the left. So, you put this over on a big old piece of foam. And then start carving him out. Uh, carving his body out, you know. But we're going to skin the fish out first. Now that I got the template of his body, I'm not worried about it. And then uh, we'll do test fits and basically
test fits will be how you size him up, make sure he fits good and everything. But this helps. This does, it's an important process. It does help. It is important. Well, there's what we got. We got a left turn catfish body and then the profile at the side. View. And with those, we're going to carve a body and make it fit. First, we're going to get on skinning the catfish. Just like I did on some of the other fish that I got on my channel. Um, start the end with an X-Acto knife and a sharp blade. And I'm going to go up just under the skin. And I want to go all the way to the uh, where the fin rays start. And... Uh, all the way across this is going to be the side that we're cutting on it's going to be a left turn so i go just above the rays i can feel them underneath my blade i want to slide right above those rays and it goes like so forth Okay, then there's going to be one right up the middle. I usually get a pair of shears and cut right up the middle, all the way up. So we've got one side that's going to be on against the wall. So I just, and I want to be right down the middle as much as possible. Let's actually try this. Right down the middle as much as possible. Got a little bit off track there, but we'll be fine. I'm going right up the middle. There's a rib cage right there, going above the rib cage. It looks like on this guy, you can even cut above the, uh, uh, the collarbone area. It looks like it's got, the skin is covered over it, but it looks like you can cut above it too. Well, this is pretty wild. You don't want to have to anyway. So I'll get my, uh, I know I'm in the way a lot, but like right here. Get up under there, cut through that. This collarbone, all that gets cut through. And, oh yeah, pretty stout right there. Should be able to cut it though. Try these shears here. There's a collarbone right there and it's some hard, heavy, and we gotta try to cut through that. It's not easy. We even have to use some bolt cutters. Or got some bolt cutters. I gotta cut through that collarbone. So, uh, blew that done it. Right here, right on the other side of the wheel. It should be that way, isn't it? Yeah. You see skin. So I'll try to save that skin, so I will actually cut right here, and that's the skin, and it goes all the way around to this very point right here where I'm going to make a cut, and the reason we're doing this is so um, we have as much skin as we need for tucking. So I try to get as close as I can to the, the last gill. I uh, didn't do a super good job, but. Okay, I went all the way to the end here. 
and uh, basically all this will peel over I'll show you okay here's where you gotta be a little careful uh, we don't want to tear the skin but we want to definitely go through it so this is gonna be fun right here um, it is a catfish and so it is a little bit set up a little bit different so get a little bit of borax and put in here to help us out a little bit and hopefully that'll help kind of get some of that in there but basically you can see how it uh, same concept as with any other fish you pull back on that skin or any animal actually you pull back you see the membrane and rake something over it uh, this is a fish scaler I guess that's what you call it but just how they catalog you know which I can tell this is going to need to be kind of a slow steady process it doesn't seem to be too much of a tender fish so that helps as far as you know getting the stuff off of him or separating him from the rest especially right here around the spine looks like it just goes up under the skin just goes right up under the the rib cage and uh a lot of not much of anything else so yeah just skin is just barely over the rib cage so that's kind of fun rib cage is where you got to watch out obviously so so basically this is going to be fun Just holding back, I see a little bit of membrane running my blade. And I'm using my exacto knife right now because it's doing such a great job. So I'm going to keep doing that. I'll get with you a little bit later. Yeah, I've noticed it seems to help when you tug a little bit on the skin, it seems to want to separate better. And uh, it's kind of what I've been doing. I guess that makes sense because you hear people grabbing pliers and stripping the fish down and. That's how they skin them out. So uh, I could see how a little bit of tugging would help in the skinning process. Okay, but let's see, right down here, it's coming down, here coming down. And I thought you'd want to see this. It's coming off real good right here too. Right here where we made the incision with the exacto knife. And uh, it's coming off right here real good. You tug a little bit and then it just comes right apart. Don't tug hard, but tug enough to help help it kind of separate a little bit. So it's working pretty good. So this is coming apart and not too bad. If I can keep from uh, making a, a bad cut in it, I'm good to go. So far, so good. One more down right here. And the cool thing is, there's no scales to have to worry about. I mean, that's pretty neat. Working my way down to the uh, Where the fins are and of course you gotta break through some fin bones and stuff and you want to be careful not go through the skin but I'm just gonna kind of feel if I can go by feel and cut through it I'll be tickled to death 
Okay, here with these fin rays, I'm not going to the other side. You know, uh, I'm making sure I got my finger back there feeling. But I am going deep enough to cut through the, the bone, the fin bones. And uh, it's just a big old piece of, a bit, you know, it's got that, you know how they got that big long fin there. I'm just cutting through that, staying under the skin. Make sure it's separated good up here. Okay, yep, we're down the braids. Uh, those fin bones, you know, uh, they're cutting, going through. Round three. Okay, you're better off of not using a serrated edge, maybe using something like an exacto knife blade or something. Coming apart nicely. There we are. Okay. A little borax here to give you a hand or something if you need it. And uh, just remember those rib bones are right there. You just got to go right up under there. Try not to get any meat on there, but, you know, it's going to happen. So uh, just do the best you can. And we can get the meat off later. Tug in just slightly. Seems to help with uh, the skin coming off. A little bit of tension on it. So I'm going to get some of this done, and I'll get back with you. My head was probably in the way, but you get the idea. Just kind of pull a little bit. I use the point, and it's uh, coming right off. The skin is coming off the collarbone, but it's like super thin right there. So I'm just uh, barely trying to work it off, and it seems to be coming off. So... But, uh, real easy to put a hole in him right here, that's for sure. But he's, uh, skin's coming off, though. But it's very, like if it was a bass or something, a lot of times I'd cut around that, um, and you can only get so far, uh, but, um, yeah, on a catfish, you can skin him, you can skin him right out, it looks like. That's just peeling away. Basically, just uh, skin on bone, and I'm still getting it off, is what I'm getting at. So, it's just the adipose, mainly. I don't know if there is any bone up there, but that went through pretty easy right there. That was his adipose. Okay. Bring it down here. Oh yeah, that's just uh, got nothing there really. Uh, just cutting through a little bit of something. Some kind of bone right here. I guess it's a the dorsal. May take the uh, bolt cutter again to get through those which uh not too surprising it's a big old fish so just trying to skin him out a little bit better here and come in handy on these big old fish now oh there he goes Well, that looks pretty.
pretty good for that. And what I'm gonna do is probably gonna take the head off of this guy. Got more of that collarbone, but yeah, it'll come right off. Or at least so far it's been coming off real good. So. And a lot of times I'll cut all this off because it's not gonna show it's up against the wall. And to be honest with you, that's a lot of times what I do. It's just a lot less hassle. This collarbone can come off. I'm not going to use it for anything. It's right here. It's going to be side up against the wall anyway. If I can cut that fin off. Okay, that helps. If somebody's going to do a full body mount or something, they might want to keep it. But I'm not. It might be a good spare fin or something. But actually, the head's going to come off anyway, so we're going to try to do a reproduction head. And, uh, so that's going to be coming up here in a little, little bit. In the meantime, I'm going to keep taking this stuff down. Just tug a little and uh, separate the skin from the meat as good as you can without making a tear or a cut. And uh, oh yeah, we got more down here. Let's see. Okay. Now that's going to be another fun one. Oops. That's the anus. So we're going to cut to the anus right here. Good thing we got lots of borax to help soften up some of that blood. Or suck it up is a better word. I'm gonna keep going down with this. Oh, let's see. Wait. Let's see, we got the got those fins. Kind of cutting through them a little bit. It's like any other fish, except a lot bigger. And you gotta be willing to take the time to do what's gotta be done. Right here we've got got like a in between the fit the two fins you got like a little bit of a plate there a little bony plate bass got it too they all got it so if you can it's great to cut through that and I think it just did believe I did. Yeah. Sure did. Here on one side. Now this is basically uh, this one side that holds the uh, uh, this fin Pel uh, pelvic fin and then one holds the other side. Basically, I, I cut the, the bone in the middle. And you can trim it down. And we'll cut it. We might as well do that while we're rolling. So, I guess I'll just. It looks like it's as low as I can go. Get my snippers. Snip through it. There you go. That's not bad for starters. Probably be done a little bit better, which we'll get it later. But excess bone and cartilage, if it can come off, go ahead and get it off. Uh, okay, we're gonna do the other one the same way. 
There's the anus. Look through the anus with ease. Here's the bone, that big bone that we cut in half. Here's the other side of it on the other side. It's uh, right there. You want to separate it. Basically, it's just that bone. Now, you're probably not getting to see it real good, but because of where my camera's at. But basically, for the pelvic fin, all that bone where the two joints come together. I made a cut right down the middle between both of those fins and I got what's on the other side this is going to be on the side that's up against the wall but yeah it's coming off there's a big old piece here see how it's coming up all this got to be cut off We don't need it. You can see it right here. Try to snip all this off. See what we got. Okay, there's the anus, so that's, I think it is. What do we got going on here? Yeah, we're good. Okay, so I cut through the bones of both of these. So they're just kind of lagging a little bit there. Uh, I'm pushing up with my pointer fingers, and a lot of times you can even get the, get it off a little better, you know. I guess we can start taking some of this stuff off. Oh, yeah, through the end. Yeah, this is real important. Now, just like on any fish, we get right down here on the end. Um, we want to get up under, without going through, we want to get up under those scales. We're not cutting through, but we are cutting through the the spiny rays of the of the fin. We're cutting through them. So and then we'll do a better job later. So yeah, I hadn't cut through yet, thank God. Maybe some down through here, you know, real fine stuff. Uh, let's see, on this side, it'd be okay, that's through on this side.
Yeah, we went through. See how we're through? And now with all the rays separated, we should be able to start cutting the body uh, coming down on the skin on the other side. You know what I mean? Um, let's try the scaler again. Now, it's not working all that hot, but this is definitely working. But we can start at the tail, work our way down. Come on down, separating that membrane again. This time we're working on the other side. And that's the show side, the other side. So we definitely want to try to do our best as far as putting holes on that side if we can. So far, I hadn't put a hole anywhere, really. So... If I have, it's been like super small and I hadn't even noticed it much, but you can see it's coming off real good. Just tugging, tugging and cutting. Let's see if we can start cutting or something. Ah, that helped. That really did help. I could hear it. Problem is, it needs to be cut, broke, cut, let's see, uh, completely in two. See what we can get. Looks like it's coming off anyway. Uh, let's see how good I can get. Okay. We got a lot of skin here we got to get though. If at all possible. Yeah. It's coming off anyway, so I think we're good. I may have to lose a little bit of skin, but hey, it's on the side that's not showing. You just got to really have the good tools to work on this stuff, I tell you. The skin on a seed just come right off this collarbone anyhow. And it is. I guess I wasn't kidding about you know being able to use pliers to skin a catfish, you know. Just pull down. Hanging from a tree and pull down is what I've always heard. So apparently it's possible because of the skin. I mean it's coming down, so. And you can see where I'm kind of coming down the collarbone. You see the collarbone there? Should be able to anyway. Uh, okay, we've got this right here. And uh, I'm just going to get what I can feasibly get to, so. Okay, it's coming off. And right down here is a little bit tedious work. But my goal is to go all the way down. Probably... Probably 
right to right there where the throat latch is. Uh, so this is what I got going on. All this is going to peel off. See how it's coming? All this has got to come off. So it's from the collar bone. And it's coming. Coming off slowly but surely. We're still on the collar bone there. You see how it's coming down slowly but surely. And we're going to go on down to right here where the gill, that's where the two gills meet on both sides of the head. And like right here, see, see how it's coming down? Much easier. Yes. See, a lot, like, uh, a lot of times when I mount fish, part of the collarbone is missing anyway, but nobody ever notices, you know, some of that small, minute stuff, you know. But right here is the throat latch. So it's just coming right off. But now right there, where you stop skinning, I'll go ahead and cut through all that. You know, he's got some bone up in there, you know. We're going to work on getting the body out first. So I'm holding on one side and pulling on the other.
slowly but surely he's coming apart. We dug him a little bit and he come apart. But to be safe, you know, make sure you cut that membrane. All right, keep working on that and I'll get back with you. Here's so far so good, it's coming off. Um, I'm going to work on this side for a little while. Try not to get in the way too much, but I've, obviously I will. Once I get it like this. Okay, that'll work. And uh, so here I'm just tugging. Uh, I want to keep most of the meat off of it if I can, but at the same time, I'm trying to get the body out. So just do what you can, when you can, while you can, I guess. Um, so I'm just kind of tugging lightly and trying to come down with it. Fish scaler just didn't seem like it was doing much work for me, so I'm using the X-Acto knife. I'm just trying to cut through membrane and keep most everything on the on the fish if I can. It's not been super easy, that's for sure. But here it's coming down. Coming down right here. Helps to tug a little bit, of course. No holes yet, but I'm gonna make sure. No holes that I don't think of, but. Less work later if you don't put no holes in them, so. Now these fish may be good enough you could use borax on the skin and be fine. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to go like I did on the carp and use the denatured alcohol. Because um, at least I know I can mount it that way with that stuff. So that's probably my technique. Use the denatured alcohol. He's coming up slowly but surely. And around the end, you can uh, see where I can run my blade and get all this just to pop up, you know. And uh, it's not coming off as good as I wanted it to, but that's okay. Um, I'm just going to have to do some fleshing on that skin, unfortunately. But it's coming up, so that's what matters most.
come up. So that's pretty amazing. But hey, he's a catfish. He don't have scales. So the skin is tough pretty well. But he's uh, no scales whatsoever. A lot of flimsy skin is what I'm getting at. Kind of flimsy. But there's a lot of meat still on this guy. And that's all right. Still getting the body out, so we're making progress. Try to get back to the skin. I kind of pulled away, cutting into a lot of meat here lately, so I'm going to try to get back to the skin if I can at all possible. So there's skin right there. There's some skin. That skin. That skin. There we are. So we're back on the skin there, so that's good. Well, I'm going to keep on coming down with this, and uh, I'll show you when we get on down to where I showed you how we cut through all the fin junctures, uh, you know, the, the pelvic fins and all that. That's all been cut. This, all the spiny rays through here, we uh, cut them off, as you can see. They're right through there. So we're just making progress. Basically, anywhere where the fins connect to the body, you're going to have to cut some bone. It's just like that with any fish, so... Um, basically the same thing, You're doing the same exact thing, so, oops, you can see the, the fin rays here where we cut them, um, and they're, they're, any place where the fins are connected to the body, you've got to cut, that's just the way it goes, and then we're making progress, and I'm just tugging with one side and cutting with the other, and they can surprisingly take a little bit of tug, so, might be pretty good on that, but anyway, I'll uh, keep doing this a little bit more here. You see, I'm coming down more and more. Keep proceeding forwards, and when I get to something new, I'll uh, I'll get back with you. Okay, we uh, where we snipped through the spiny dorsal, we got it over, uh, and uh, so we're still coming forwards. Just uh, Meat is really hanging on on this side, it seems like, but a lot of it's probably just me not getting it off good. It's a very tedious process. I may even have to do a little bit more cutting with my shears. It's quite possible, too.
Seems like they're bone all up through there. But the body's coming off anyway, so we're just gonna get what we can. Say about everything else anyhow. Just peeling the skin up, I'm on the belly. And I'm just working my way up, you can see. Not doing the best job in the world, but it is coming. Whatever I can leave on the body is great, but, you know, within reason, you know. You don't want to make things too hard on you, but you can see how it's just coming up. Here's the belly area. I think that's a hole. I don't think so, anyway. No. That's just part of the belly. Okay. Yeah, we're going right over the belly area. Okay, you got those uh, spiny rays on this side too. It's uh, hard to get over those a little bit, seems like. So. so here we are. For a long time, I always heard that you can't mount a catfish, but I noticed I'd see them mounted every now and then. So I know it's doable. A lot of people say oil in the head but if you don't use the head, you know, you just use a cast of it, uh, then that's a, you're good to go, really. So, well, they got some stuff, uh, the taxidermy company sell it. Um, Smooth cast, I think is what it's called. But you'll have to call them, like if you ever have to use it, you know, you can get with them and they'll show you exactly what you need. Okay, still got a ways to go. Here at the rib cage, it's a little bit slow going. That's where the skin tends to be pretty close on the rest of the fish, pretty much, so. It's coming up good. Left a lot of meat on the skin, unfortunately, but we'll have to come back and get it. Getting up to the door, or the, you tell I'm getting up to the fin, there's a spike, as you can tell. This is the show side, so we uh, definitely want to leave that fin on there, if you know what I mean.
it's coming off. And right here where the spiny dorsal is, um, I guess this is some of the bone from up there. Uh, it comes up through here. I'm going to do a better job getting, getting it off. Uh, it's a little hectic. It's like the, the top of the brain pan, I guess you could say. Um, I'm on that too. So, it's, uh, trying to get it off. Don't want to put no unnecessary holes if I can keep from it. And there's like a bony plate on top of the head and in order to salvage the skin, um, I want to get as much of that off as I can. So, that's kind of the name of the game of what I'm doing. But now right here, it's about as far down as I want to go. I'm going to go down a little bit right here. I think I told you a little bit wrong. It's actually the uh, spiny dorsal. That's where I'm at right now. I'm still getting what I can off. And uh, it should come off pretty, pretty good, I'm thinking. Um, oh, shoot. I have to use this. And comes in handy on these fellows. Got it good enough for me. Yep. That got it that time. A lot of meat on that sucker. But just gonna slowly getting it off, and I'll get back with you. And yeah, not fun. Oh, that's taken care of the spiny dorsal. That's taken care of. I'm gonna go down a little farther and then I'm gonna, actually I could go from this end. Skin him out and then worry about casting the head is what I'm getting at. That worked out pretty good. Grab the hemostats. Or four sips, or whatever you call them, or want to call them. I'm going to use this to kind of. There's some bone on top of his head, so I'm going just below that bone. That's how I'm cutting him out. So. I know there's usually some skin. I'm probably going to go about right to here with it. So, uh, Probably have to do some sanding or whatever, but we'll get it, we'll make it work. And the skin's peeling back real good, so I figured I'd show you. I'm just taking it down on this side, where I made my incision. The collarbone is where I'm starting. That's what I'm getting at. You get here to the gills, then uh, yeah, obviously we got a 
do some work on the side here. Turn him over on the side. Okay, we got to I'll give it a shot with this, but I don't think it's stout enough. No, I don't think so. I'm hoping I can look out and find some cartilage somewhere. Be able to get in there and do some cutting. I can get everything but that spoon. Throw some borax on there. See what's going on. Cut all that off. That skin, yeah, it's trying to come down on the collarbone. We'll go ahead and take it down. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Um, just gonna go up on the gill as far as I can. Um, without going too deep or anything. And possibly go, yeah, right there. I just, I'm not equipped to cut through that collarbone. If it was a bass, I could do it. But this big old catfish is just too big. I can't get up in there very good. You know, I'll do the best I can. You know, but that's about that's all I can do. I want as much skin, you know, for the body as I need, and then uh, for the rest, you know. Uh, I know I go way in here. Yeah, that's where the incision is, is right here across. Right, right there. And I'm about as far as up as I can go. Right there. In fact, I'm going to make a cut right there and see if I can get through that. I don't know if I can. I didn't cut in there from this side. Yeah, like that. Yeah, oh yeah. Just gonna work on getting that stuff out a little better. Uh, definitely gotta get. There it is. Try to get that spiny, that first one, you know. Well, you can see what I want to skin off, skin out. Um, right through here. Uh, you know, get as much skin as possible, if I can. I'll do the best I can do. Now this skin will come over this this little bone right here. You see how it's come off of it.
We'll go down as far as we can. Whoops. With the skin. We'll keep coming back. You're on that collarbone right there. Bull cutters aren't the best in the world, but they'll work. Okay, that helped. Yeah, that helped out a lot. skin right here. I don't care to lose a little of it. I'm not worried at all about it. My main goal is to try and get, so usually I break this down, but it's not doing it because it's so well. Uh, so big and hard as the bone is really be in trouble for me. Up here, I'm gonna lop it off right here. Try something a little different here. Put a little bit of this on there. to the throat. He's barely hanging. Okay, I'm going to try to make a cast of his head. But I'm going to skin the body out first. And uh, it should work. I don't see why not. I may have to put some stuff to keep it from getting stuck. But we'll work on it. I don't need it for nothing. He's still connected a little bit. Okay. Throw this body away, get it out of sight, out of mind. So I gotta do a little bit more skinning out. But it's gonna be a lot easier now with the body removed. So it's gonna be much, much easier. Okay, we got this one dorsal and we got some of the collarbone with it that I hacked off. So it's gonna be easier to work with now. We just uh, 
like before, just kind of pull back and use the edge of the exacto knife blade to get it to come down. It's a thin area, is what I'm getting at. But you just tug back and it'll come off. See, I'm kind of taking it down, going on down. Okay, coming right to the part where it needs to be cut the most, so. Fine on the fin, just got one of those. A couple of holes in the area, but I'm not worried about that. I got off what I had to get off, so I'm tickled. And throw all this away. That's the whole lower it's collarbone on both sides, the lower collarbone. It's done. Got her. A little bit of belly area is still left there. We got our soft dorsal, bony dorsal, pectoral fin, um, pelvic fin. Catfish are super, super, super soft. Skin is. So, we'll just douse some borax on him. Take some of the moisture out of him so he don't cut on him and everything. And I'm going to start cutting away on him. Yeah, it ain't going to work. It's too tough. It's just a tough old uh, fish. Okay, this is a... Do you can see how it's the same way as if it was on the, on the body? It's a little bit... It's stouter because it's so old and big. It's been around a while. Not sure how old fish are, like when they get this big. It's hard to say, in all honesty. Kind of hard to say. Do you see how it's coming off? Basically, I'm fleshing it like I would an animal. You know, like a a critter for or an amphibian or something, you know. Except I'm using my exacto knife. Just gotta be careful like you would with anything else. Don't want to cut it accidentally, you know. See, it's coming off just like I would if I was flesh an animal. Basically spread with my fingers and uh let it take it off. So that's uh, literally that easy. It's what's just like you flesh an animal out. You know? So basically the same thing. But I'll get back with you when I make more progress. Of course, you know where the dorsal was connected to the body. This is the, I guess, the soft dorsal. And. Uh, yeah, right here on this side, so you can take, I'll get my knife, run it up as close as I can, and as deep as I can, to get all that extra bone out that I might have missed. But you can see I'm also shading the meat off towards the fin. I'm wanting to get that stuff off. 
and it's the way to do it right here get my shears cut all that excess stuff off this is a little extra meat Based on get what I can off on one side, and I'll go to the other and get the rest of it. It comes right off. Okay, we'll go to the other side, right here. And, and I'll rake in from the other side. And it looks like I got a little extra I need to get off anyway. Um, right now's a good time as any. I'll just go ahead and start raking towards the fin. Towards the, the bones of the fin, you know. And this stuff ought to come right off pretty good. All this got to come off anyway, so. There's an anus right there. Needs a little bit more work. Here, a little bit more work. Shaving all that meat up to the to the bone, basically what we're doing. it can go that way and what I do like on all the fish I'll grab the fin right there at the base and well, a lot of this could come off already anyway but get the idea It's just a lot of excess meat that I don't need to have on there. Um, I see how I hold it and push up a little bit. I don't want to cut a hole if I can keep from it, but I can get pretty close to where those fin rays are pretty well, even with the skin, I guess you could say. Go back up here again and cut a little bit more off. So far, so good. No holes. We see all that's coming up. Yeah, there's still a lot of meat on there, and I still want to try to get that meat off as much as possible. So I'm going to try it again. I'm sit it down or something if I have to. Pull that skin apart a little bit so I see what's going on. Like right here, I can still shave it down, get that red meat off. Get right to the fin juncture. One more right there. One more right here. 
One more right there. One more right there. There, right there. Okay, you can see how I kind of got it down a little bit. Now I do the same thing again. I can feel those little spiny things sticking out. There's one right there. And that's pretty bare. That's as close to skin. Almost as I can get right there. But you can see little places where I can cut a little bit more. All this will come up a little bit more. You can see I'm getting pretty close to about as far as it'll go. This is the soft dorsal. It's that big long fin on the back. The adipose had a little bit of cartilage or something in there and I just kind of cut it out, scraped it out. And yeah, that wasn't much of anything. No, oh, that's this is actually the uh, the anal fin, the big long anal fin. Not soft dorsal, sorry. Forgetting the anatomy of the fish I'm working on. But yeah, it's a uh, Just get all this uh, stuff off the. And there's still a little bit right in here I can get off. And you just push it up and you can get it a little bit better even. Get pretty much all the way as far down as you can get. I got pretty good on these back ones, but these up here still got quite a bit. So I'm getting them off with the with a little bit of bone that's left. Look at that. It's, uh, it's a lot better than it did. It looks like I can still clean some, uh, clean my exacto knife a little bit. And turn back around this way. Just straighten it up a little bit better. Get that off a little bit and we'll have that good to go. So we got most of the fin junctures. I probably need to work on the pectoral a little bit better, I think. 
most of that is off too so it's pretty good but there again I'll hold the fin again Let's see how close I can get it I guess pelvic very bottom ones and here's just grab each one independently and go to the, making sure all that meat is up where it needs to be and Pretty good. Most of that meat's off of that one. Go to the other one, do the same thing. Pretty good. Pretty good. Now we'll go to the tail. Here on the tail, I hold it like this. I see a little bit of something down here at the very bottom of the fin. A little bit of gristle or whatever you cut that off and you can actually well I rub it oh that works fine for that you know go up under the rays a little bit it's working good for that okay Now you just get your shears. You get up in there and start cutting that stuff down, you know, to make it. up all the way to the very top one. pretty good up on this end. I could end up cutting a little bit of this off here. him off maybe if I got to get a little bit more meat off I will but he seems pretty good oh, there's a little bit up here at the top okay right here on the very end here a little bit okay what I use is Half and half denatured alcohol and water. So whatever how much uh, denatured alcohol you put in, you put in that much water. 
then you just get your guy or your fish I mean fish in and uh, just make sure he's covered real good and that's more than enough more than enough and uh, I'll let that go for about a week in the meantime, we'll carve the body and make you cast to the head and all that other good stuff. I'm going to carve a body for the catfish. And I actually bonded an extra piece there uh, just so I could have the right width. And here's my outline I made in my fish earlier. I'm just going to pin, put a couple of pins in it just so it don't move around much. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the curve... So I'm going to outline the curvature and cut that out first before I do anything. So I'll have my left turn, if that makes any sense. Okay, I got my pen, got a Sharpie pen. And I'm just going to make an eight outline of my mold. It's good to know that skin stretches a little, so you have a little forgiveness. That, and that's meant to encourage people if they think they can't carve a fish body or something. Skin can stretch a little, and you still have a good looking fish. And then we take pins out. You know, it's going to be a left turn. So we got the thickness of our body. Uh, for the most part. Um, <clears throat> this guy was actually, he was all ahead. More than anything else, he was all ahead. Cut this foam in half. Okay. Cut this in half to use in my saw. Now I've got a lot less to worry about and to try to cut through, uh, make my life a little bit easier. Now I can still mount several bass bodies with this. So I've still got some foam for other projects, whatever it may be. And now I go back to my original plan, which is to cut through all this, which shall be a lot easier. It should be. Try to cut straight down when I do this too. The foam fish you don't want to make too many bad mistakes with it. And I'll probably get another fish body out of that or something. Have. You'd be surprised how they come in handy. Make fake rocks out of them. All kinds of good stuff like that. There. Get some 
this off. There we are. Another piece or something else. Just a lot less labor on your part if you can do it that way. Here's a little. Okay. foam anyway because the foam is flaking off but we do the best we can do This is going to have just the skin kind of independent from the from the head, of course. Um, this is not really any different than you do a trout if you cast a head for a trout. Or if you prefer to keep the head on, but I wouldn't do it for a catfish. I don't think so. Okay, I ended up bonding another piece. Um, I think it set up good. But basically, I've got enough foam to make sure. Now, a, a, a bandsaw comes in real handy if you got one. Oh my gosh, it comes in real handy for this stuff. If you got one. Better and better. 
And then go this way, straight up and down. And as you can see, it's doing a lot better on our outline here. So, doing good. Seems like when you, when you outline the fish, he's always ends up being bigger. So don't be surprised. We're gonna have to shave quite a bit, now. shave him down quite a bit. start my carving and stuff. I want to center it as good as I can all the way down. I know sometimes we're not perfect, but we can do the best we can. Sometimes it helps me to kind of squint, squint and get depth out of the get depth out of the picture kind of. So I kind of shut my eyes vaguely. So whatever works good for you. And then of course Right here's the middle. There we are. There's the middle. Right here is the middle. Right there is the middle. Let's see. That'll work. Now do it again. Some people don't have to do this, but I do it just for the heck of it. Well, I mean, because I trust in the outcome. So I do it. Squint my eyes and kind of look back a little bit, try to take depth out of the picture and center it right down the middle. You most assuredly got impurities and uneven areas from just doing a rough cut, I guess is the right word. Right here on the end, right in the middle, right here, here's in the middle. Right here's in the middle. There we are. I do the same thing on the other side. Right in the middle of the fairly good to me. And I'll go back to the other side on the bottom. Do the same thing again. Right down the middle. Squint a little bit if you have to. To kind of get depth out of the picture. Try to center it as good as you can. Right through here, center it. Here we are. This is actually going to be the top, also.
and then right down the middle. There's a first one, here's a second one, just like we did on the bottom. Sometimes I'll start in other different areas to kind of make sure I stay centered, you know, when I'm drawing the lines. Especially on a big old fish like this, it seems to make a little bit more of a difference. Now, if you look at them from the front, it's supposed to be a vaguely oval shape, um, where the top is thinner. Not quite like an egg, of course, more of a triangular type deal, but... You want the back to be the thinner than the belly. The belly's going to be a little bit fatter. And even if you don't master that right away, you can still mount a good fish on that on the on your uh, form because I don't always get it just right either. But as long as the skin stretches around it real good, uh, you'd be surprised how good it's going to look. So just. Keep that in mind. There we are. Seems to be. Probably should have went out a little bit more. Something like that. Hard to nail it. Hard to nail it. Do the best you can do. Instead of shaving this at a 45 degree angle, I may try to, you know, knock some of it off in a 45 degree angle. With my actual saw. Let's see if that don't help. I'm over a little bit too far. But, you know, a lot of times I'll shave in the 45 degree angle. Not saying I can't sew on a 45 degree angle. It may help speed things up just a little, you know. Just a little. Oh, that's going to be rough anyway. Trying to get to that bondo. shaving by now, but if I don't have to, I'm just save my shaving for the final, you know, final do it. I guess the right word. That's what I'm getting at. It's easier shaving it. See you don't break foam. Screw something up, which nobody wants to do.
they'll start looking better and better and better. And also, I see a lot on the sides here that you come off. And, uh, so, yeah. Until I gotta take some off of there. Um, off here. And a lot of times I'll put another line here in the middle again, which I'll go ahead and do it. Just to help me keep control. Here again, you wanna try not to squint your eyes if it keeps you from having depth issues, because you wanna center it with the body. Not the, just the back, but the body. I tend to like to do that. Okay. As good as you can anyway. Again. Well, that one's still in, it's still showing, but I can do it a little better. We obviously this needs a lot shaving off, so. These inner turns, I need to use my salmon blocks. So, so we got the bottom too. Get pretty harsh. So I shave off the where I put it right around the middle. sharp edges. these inside corners. Take a little bit of the roughness off of it. Uh, a place where foam would have broken off. Well, I can uh, go down with clay. 
you know, just do a real good job on my shaving down here. Should be fine. Yeah, if the bongo gets rough on you, you can grimble it down or something if you have to, you know. But hopefully you won't have to do that. Go to the other side. I always come keep it in my mind where the top is gonna be. So I already know it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a left turn. This is the top. That's the bottom. And the curve is right too. So you just kind of keep your mind on that stuff while you're working on it. And you're just fine. See what I'm doing here. Basically, a lot more's got to come off the top for sure. A lot more's got to come off. Period. Sometimes in the middle of the, you know, I may put the, uh, form back on. And, uh, you found the same pinhole. That's cool. Yep. And we, at least you can see, you know, how much you gotta shave him down or something. Well, he's looking good pretty much. But what I think I'll do, try to get up, you know, this is kind of the back anyway. So, back is supposed to be a little thinner anyway. So I think I'm gonna, oh, that looks pretty good actually. Okay, just lets me know where I need to come off a little bit more. Sometimes they're going to come off a lot. But I'm going to not leave the belly alone for a little bit and work mainly on the back. I'm making the back where it's not so uh, thick. So right now the back is as thick as the belly. And uh, yeah, we gotta thin the back down. So what I'll do is, well, you know it. I'll get my marker, try to center it, go straight down. Yeah, kind of eyeball it, try to center it. Uh, put some shaving marks in there, you know. Uh, let's see what we got here. And the same thing, here's the main line up top, it's still, still okay. It seems like the, it's good for like manicuring, like when you're getting close to getting done. Smoothing the inside curves out real good. So. I think hot glue is a better option if you got a glue. 
more than one piece of foam together. It seems like the uh, hot glue is a better, it's easier to work with. You know, you can cut through it, shave through it, and it's a lot better than the Bondo. The Bondo will hold better. You're going to take the good with the bad, sort of, you know, with Bondo. There again, hot glue might be your best bet. Just kind of show me how everything is, you know. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I want to be able to look at it from the front and see like a vague oval shape where the bigger parts down on bottom coning out and do like a the narrow part on top which is going to be the back so that's basically what we're working on this is a good depth it's a good thickness for the belly in other words not so much the back so we're kind of what we got going on Uh, this guy was all ahead. And uh, I've got a fish with a bigger body and a smaller head. It's a reproduction. So that tells me. something kind of narrow it down right like here a little bit that's just where the gills are going to go like on a real form you know so Smooth under the belly here. 
soon as you can with that bondo that's not wanting to come on. coming down but you gotta work with it. Not fun in other words. It was hard to work with. Mm. It wouldn't come off too good. But we're getting close. Start test fitting soon. Basically a test fitting, put him back in the water, shave him down a little more, test fitting. I know I'm still quite a ways off, so. Okay, here's the profile. And it looks like I could Hmm. Somebody made a mark and take a little bit more off. I got that lined up good. That's kind of what I got. So you can use these templates while you're working. I'm sure you really need to shave a little bit more off. And then you just keep going. Now sometimes when you trace things out, it's going to be a little bit bigger. So it helps to know where you got to Put a little bit more off, you know, save a little bit of time. Just, uh, so like this. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. A little bit right here, a little bit thick still. Close. 
Okay, uh, I got a lot closer on that while I'm there. Now we're going to get the saw for this. It's like a little bit right here. would take care of all this trouble. And we may have this right now. Man, that's what I get some of my knife here. There we are. Right there, there. yeah. Pretty much it right there. <clears throat> now, let's put our gradient lines and start going again. And when you trace out a, an outline of a fish body, it seems the fish body tends to grow on you, especially when they're bigger. When you're outlining, you're outlining the belly, basically, not the back. So you're going to get a little bit of something with that right there. So I'm just kind of got my eyes half closed, kind of squinting a little bit to try and center it without depth tricking me, you know, if you know what I mean. I don't know. Some people are good at it and they don't need to do all this. But I like having everything available that I need to get it. So, I think I'm working mainly on the back, not the belly so much. They say I round the belly off. And we're going to have this body done. So I'm going to get back to, you know, shaving my sharp corners off. By using the like middle line, these gradient lines I call them. So I'm gonna just do it on this side too, right down the middle. But this side's about right, the belly. That's what I'm getting at. This is the back we're working on. And we now maybe some more one right here on the basically the belly is just gonna I'm gonna round the belly off now and thin the back up. So that's kind of what I got going on.
Come on, Martha. Come down now. Can you put another one right here? Put it down on it. I think it is. Push harder, okay. Okay, here we are. There we are. It's gonna be the belly. Just give me an idea and see every now and then I can look down and see if it's uneven. And it is a little bit uneven on this side, the back side. Give me a little idea where to shave. So I'll uh, get my shaver, start taking this guy down on one side. Just to even it up, you know. Just to even it up. Billy's about right. But I know from experience that throat needs to be thinner. It sure does. We do want the 
swing catfish are right after that dorsal fin. It drops a little, or right above the dorsal fin, you got all that muscle and everything. So uh, that's really something you want to get. If we can incorporate it in, that'd be great. When I did the outline, it was it was of the head and not of where what's the body that's going to go inside the head. So that's what we're incorporating right now. Turn everything down with this. Moves and everything make it look good. Won't be long. I'm even cradling this baby. Seems to work out better for me to do it that way. Pretty much every time I carve a body right here on the inside corner, I'll have a little bit of gap of uh, bone taken out. And you can easily just fill it up with clay. If you see a lot of my videos, there's always a gap right here. It's where the cur tail curves. It's just one more thing, you put a little clay in there and you're good to go. Nobody will ever notice a thing. But I'm mainly focusing on thinning the back and keeping the girth on the block belt. That's what I'm kind of doing. a lot better than Bondo to work with when you're putting two pieces of bone together. Something to definitely remember. That is Murphy's Law as far as I'm concerned. Because it's something I didn't think about at the time. So you just round off these edges, make it real good, and we should be pretty close to being good to go. I do some proper couple of trial fits with the skin, you know. And clay can be your friend too. Impurities like that. I'll put a little clay in there smoothing that off.
you use that line as a guide to tell you how much to take off, too. You know, you know, so you get an uneven spot. Center line comes in handy. So many ways. I'm ready to give it a trial fit myself. Use clay to fill in any blemishes, like right there and right there. fit see how this good this skin fits um i noticed even though it's been in this mixture of denatured, denatured alcohol and water it's still not real stiff which i like that you know usually it's pretty darn stiff so i'm gonna let this drip dry for a little while and i'll get back with you i didn't even put in no water or nothing i'm just kind of curious see how he's gonna fit um, okay, we got our, got our tail right here. Pretty big dude, man. Pretty big dude. That pose is matching up good. I guess the only thing is, got to worry about those wrinkles. Okay, that, definitely don't want those wrinkles on that. Okay. Everything so far is matching up pretty good. Uh, just a lot of wrinkles, I guess. Have to work those out while you're mounting him, I guess. I'm gonna get those things out. But see how he fits up here. Definitely fitting like super easy. Oh god, he's a super easy fit. Man, super easy. And to beat it all, there is a little bit of a black part of the top. You know how to, it's going to help you line him up up top. So that's pretty neat. His head is going to be, let's see, right here. Um... Yeah. That's where the gills are going to be, right here. Okay. If 
pins are going to be right here. That work. Yeah. Oh, yep. Got some right here. I see all these little bad spots. Um, when they dry, he's going to show up. Unless I use a real good hide paste or something, like silicone or something, um, which would hide it. It would hide it pretty good, actually. But, uh, that's a pretty good piece right there. I'm trying to take out some of these uh, bad spots that most assuredly are going to show after he dries. So, uh, yeah, Bondo not the best thing to or best thing to use when fastening two pieces of, of the form together. Definitely not the best thing to use. So now right here in the tail, I tend to always have a little bit of a damage mark right there because I guess because it's hard to make that that bend right there, and uh, it comes out in the form of a well, like little ruts. In the form, so. so we'll try to get those out. So, Have a little bit of water or something, you know, get him in. It's fitting real good. Pre fitting him one more time, and now I'm going to put a piece of plywood in the back of him. Okay, and like I did when I always start the foam, uh, foam body, I want to put a piece of plywood in the back of it, so I'm going to trace out my plywood. My Dremel tool. Okay, I got my Dremel tool, and basically just cut out. Car I'm going to carve out a spot where I can glue or bondo, whatever you got to do to get this in there. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Put it in there. Bondo it in there. Okay. Uh, get me some Bondo. And instead of worrying about putting it on cardboard, I'm going to put it in here. It's got to go down in there anyway. Yeah. Bondo and put it in there.
Well, that's plenty right there, I think. I actually think it works better in the red. So, it's set up real good. And you want to do a good job. get our piece put it back in there mash it down in there alrighty let it dry make sure it's in there deep enough and that is Excess here, you can put around the corners and uh, to ensure that it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, you know, I figured I'd go in around the corners here, um, push it down in there, um, it's right here around the sides. They get hard and it's not coming out. Okay, I got my fish skin again and uh, still pretty good and wet. But I'm going to get a little bit of silicone, siliconized caulk. I just want to add something on here to make it where it's a little bit more slick. And if there's lots of vague impurities down in there, It'll, uh, it'll cover them up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, plus you'll be able to stretch it around that, the skin a lot easier too, so, so I'll do that there, put a little bit of, okay. leave this here for a little bit, for just a second, and, uh, I guess you'd say it's like a high paste. Uh, that'll work too. Uh, not an exact fit, but it might be workable is what I'm hoping for. alcohol and water he's really a good limber but I guess it's because he has no scales yes that would be my estimation I kind of know where everything goes there you know, that goes there that goes here there. Okay, it goes there. It goes there. And we'll line that up. And go there. I need to slide a little bit. Should be able to slide a lot easier, I'm thinking. We got a little bit of that caulking on him, so that's gonna help. 
And the bag's gonna be, whoops. You see here, every little hole I've put in now, for sure. bottom. I'm going to match these fins up pretty close where I think they're supposed to go. And I got pretty good on the tail there as far as where it goes. And that lines up right there. It's a, it's a good fit right there. So Put staples on the back of him and pretty much line that tail, uh, tail up like I know it needs to go. And there it is. Actually, wouldn't hurt it to be down just a hair a bit more. I think it's right there. Yeah, and you can pin or whatever you got to do to get this tail to line up. You know, feel free to use whatever you gotta use. Making sure everything lines up as good as possible. That helps. Okay. So that's pretty good for that. Now the upper part. I'm even a Put some pins down here. Fans look like the. Uh, we can get this top part. We're in good shape. We are in good shape. We can get this to line up up here. And I'm gonna have to manhandle it and get into my work, as they say. But that's where the adipose fin goes, and right there. So that's pretty darn good. Right there. That looks pretty well on top. So, grab one of these big long things, go behind that front fin, get it where it looks pretty good, I think. And Here we are. Okay. But we know it's going to match up good, so. We're actually about ready to start mounting the, to the, you know, piece of wood and do it right. It's so flimsy. I gotta try to deal with all the flimsiness. It's not. Not easy at all. Okay. 
I'm using staples as extra arms, believe it or not. They are staples. Let me get down what I gotta get down. So, a little bit right here, and then we're gonna put them on a piece of wood. I know I've said that a hundred times already. pretty good right here uh, for that part. Now we're going to do the same on this part and get him ready for a piece of wood. Man. want the fins to line up, that's my main thing, is the fins to line up. And they do. So that's my main thing right there. Well, here's what we got so far. Uh, now we're going to put him on a piece of wood. I'm going to add a little bit of clay back behind there to get those fins ready. And uh, he's ready to go on a piece of wood. Pretty well stapled, pretty good up the back. Not perfect, but good enough to get him on the wood. So I shot. This is a great stake, and it's got a big hole in it so I can hang it up somewhere and let it dry. Then I've got uh, a couple of holes that I'm going to drill into that piece of wood back there, and then I'm going to start doctoring these fins up and getting them where they need to be. So I'm going to hold this like I need to hold it. Pop in. Now they're both in. And just dry up. Sometimes one is good enough, but if you want, you can use two. Two works really good, maybe even better. It's going to be stationary that way. So. Just a bunch of staples to hold this fin up for the most part. So yeah, That's kind of what we got going on there. Um, I like the way his fins are going there. We put one in the front. And then one in the back. Now then you, I want at the very back of his, uh, yeah, like right here, between that last fin ray, go right there in the back. And you don't want to really go underneath. You want to go through all that skin. And uh, you can, uh, you know, spread his, you know, his fin out pretty good. Here we are. It's a pretty good spread fin. It's going to look good, I think. So look under the skin, behind that fin ray. And so you've got leverage against that first one. And then, uh, go down into the foam with it and you want then you want to of course go down in the back you know um, let's see you'll get the uh, lat between the last ray and you'll uh, 
you know, like that. Kind of helps to do it in the back, but actually better than it does the front, believe it or not. But you get the idea. And that's your, that's your ray, or your fin. Actually, these big uh, pieces of metal that I use to, uh, you know, extend the fins up on my uh, grass car, they work perfect for this. Um, they definitely work good for the, uh, let's see, I'm supposed to do it from the rear is actually better, but I cheat sometimes to go from the front. But... Okay, you get, okay, get one there, that's pretty good right there already, that's pretty, pretty well straight, really can't get no better than that. Okay, the adipose, all I really need for that is just to stand straight up. And all I need for that small pin. Basically, I just want to be able to kind of stand it up anyway. So that looks pretty good, just like that. I've used these for, I think, even a rockfish, I think. So I've used them quite a bit, actually. Uh, hangers are pretty stout. But, okay. That's in there pretty good. And now, probably get away with using a small T pin for the rear. And just, you know, kind of. Make sure the tail is kind of up, you know. Uh, let's see. Like that. Just kind of good and spread out. Yeah, like that. That looks pretty good. Gonna be up like that. Another one is gonna be out also. Same way. You can see I've got these real small uh, six ten gauge wire. Um, but these fins, they're a little flimsy right now, but that will change. I definitely need to put some clay in here too. That is obvious. This guy is so limber. That skin, so soft. I got this right here, and right behind, uh, what well, I'm going to miss, uh, about down to the ear where the actual fin rays start. I'll, uh, I'll get the point of that thing I made and go right down between the rays so you can see how it come out. But I'm on the back side, see. And uh, then I'll uh, do what I gotta do. I may have to pull some of these stables back out even. That's possible. What I gotta do is make this look right, whatever I gotta do. And, uh, okay, there's the top one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me see what's kind of going on. Oh, ready. Oh, gotta build all that up and pull all this around. You can see I got a little bit of a dilemma there. I gotta work that skin out back behind there. Of course, the same thing on the bottom part. Uh, it's looking like it's meeting up pretty good, though. So 
the most part. I'm going to go ahead and throw a couple staples in. That's looking pretty good, actually. It's meet, all the skin's meeting up real nice. So, if it looks good, go ahead and put a staple in it. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay, that looks good down there. Um, uh, maybe they did a little bit too much on top. Let's see. Or, they just yeah, he's a little bit too much. A little bit too much, okay. Well, that's why you got it where you can do what you want with it. That actually looks better like that. Get all this taken care of. That looks pretty dang good. Wow. Sometimes you just gotta work with them, they start looking smooth all of a sudden. Yeah, about like that, yeah. There we are. Okay. be better to go down right through some of these. Okay, from the rear, I want to do that. Yeah, there we are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there we are. Okay, kind of what we got for the fins. Okay, we're going to carve the fins, or not carve the fins, but uh, put some screen material up so they don't move. Uh, carving the fin comes a lot later. We're basically, uh, just going to make a outline of the fin, and then cut it out and uh, do it twice. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, we uh, well, the screen material we get it at Walmart by the way. Um, canvas or something. I don't know what you call it actually. But, Okay, you see how that meets up like that? So, I'm going to do another one and basically make an outline. I'm going to make an outline in the other one. Like this.
So you got that. You got that one. And you do it again. forth. Make sure the fins are good and spread. And they are. Okay. Now I'll get my clothes pins, put them in there. It just makes for a good nice straight fin. And then it's not buckling. And it goes straight all the way down to the bottom. Or you can use uh, also um, paper clips. Paper clips work wonders. Um, clothes pins are faster, but you know you can also use paper clips. On bass, I use them exclusively, like around the fins and stuff, uh, like the gill. So the gill, uh, that that layer of skin up under the gill. Um, it's a part of the gill flap, I guess you could say. Right before you get to the gills itself. And uh, yeah, I'll use them there. And you'll see it in my video. If you look at my video, you'll see. So, But we we'll go on to the next one. Okay, now here we do the same thing here. Um, I've got the, probably don't want to spread it too outrageous. I don't want to like look crazy on there or anything, but probably give it a little bit. So I'll, uh, look, this way right there. I'll, uh, oh, that'll work out pretty good. I'll make an outline of this and then I'll uh, tighten the fins up. Okay, here we did the outline, so we're going to do it again. We're going to sharpie pen is almost out of ink, uh, unfortunately. clay back in there. See all that? Try to make it fit, uh, make a worm out of it, whatever you got to do. And uh, try to build some of that stuff back up in there. And wherever you got to do it. There's definitely a gap there, so. Uh, Real easy to. Sometimes it's hard to judge that actual length. You know what you got to do, so just gotta work with it. see where it needs it even so see it right there 
See right there. See right there. There. It's just filling that gap where you see that, that it needs uh, clay a little bit, you know, so. That's uh, what we're doing. We're putting something in, then we know it needs to be there, so. That's part of the name of the game, you know. Good, actually. That rod is so stiff, I can't bend it. I don't like that. But it is what it is. So. Don't want to overdo it on these fins. You know, you can stretch them too much. I don't want to do that. So I'll just uh, maybe a, just a hair. A good open fin, you know. That's all I care about. A good open fin. And of course, same on this side. Yeah, over shot just a little. This one's going to come out looking pretty good, actually. So. I have to do a little work here and there, of course. <clears throat> you get the idea. Um, now we got to go to the uh, anal fin. There. Until it starts right there. Yeah, moisture off these fish makes these things where they don't want to cut worth a cut worth a hoot or leave a mark worth a hoot let me rephrase that there again uh, trace out two parts this is the uh, handle fin um, you just want to make sure those rays are didn't spread you know uh, through and through so that's your main objective and uh, they're definitely that so Good and spread, and for the most part, yeah. there we are. Then we got the pelvic and the pectorals. Oh yeah, oh, it fit nicely. You can spread out, it fits pretty good. And that'll work. Grab the first ray and make sure I get a good bite on it. And uh, you can see what it looks like right there. I'm going to make sure it's good and forwards. And I want to make sure it's good and spread out on the end. Space for the clips. It's always advantageous. Uh, I mean, if you're running out of space with the clothes pins, it's advantageous. You can uh, can use the uh, paper clips, and I like that angle a little bit. And that's just kind of prop things in place, and that's the name of the game. And do the other one the same way. Okay, now we're just going to let him dry. We're going to work on the head and make a cast of the head and put it on and we will have mounted our catfish. Skin mount. I forgot the adipose fin. Um, I want it to kind of lay straight. So uh, I get a pin or two and put them in and 
That way the adipose fin's not going to go anywhere, see? Like right in here, I think we're going to put some. Down in there, we're probably going to put a little cock. Right here where the fins are actually separated from the body, I feel that in one cock. Right there, there's a big wrinkle. Um, that will get a little bit of cock. Smoothing it out, make it look, you know, more natural. We don't want a lot of wrinkles showing up or anything. But we're going to let that dry and start working on the head. Yeah, I got this big old catfish head here. Uh, I'm going to do open mouth. I think he wants something down in his head. So uh, it's going to be probably like that. It's going to be a big old head open. But I'm going to cut the whiskers off because they will get in the way of the mold. So I'm going to measure the length. So I probably ought to put him on first. Okay, I want it down by his body. Right in here. Okay. And that whisker is a total of exactly five inches long, man. Couldn't do that again if I tried. Five inches long. Okay. So I'll mark that down somewhere and toss these because you can't use those. We'll cut the other one off, same place. Okay, that one's long. And I'll mark it down so I don't forget. And actually, you probably look at reference pictures and get a good idea. But it doesn't hurt, uh, these top ones, they are... Almost two inches long. Actually, they are two inches long. Or one and seven eighths or something like that. Top ones are one and seven eighths. So I'll write that down. See now on the bottom ones. I've got three inches for the outer ones and two inches on the inner ones. So I just write bottom, outer, three inches, inner, equals two inches. Just make a note of it, put it on your pet board, whatever you got to do. Just cut them off right there at the, where, the, where the head is. I was advised to cut the gills off. I'm going to put down on this a little bit. Where are we? Let's see. Got it. I was told to cut those gills out, but I'm trying to get around it. If I can. too much so perfect we need a couple more off the sides here Do a few pins. 
It'll probably be so minutely small that nobody will see him anyway. Put him in there. Bottom the head out, of course. And do the same thing on this side. Places where the gills might try to turn backwards or something. I'm new at this. I'm just I'm just trying new stuff. Yeah, all right. Go there for a second. Let's see if we kind of hold it. Yeah. Picking up a little bit. Don't take much. Oh. In other words, I gotta be able to pull him back out. And I'm new at this, I don't know what I'm doing really. As far as these whiskers, what's left of them, I think I'm gonna glue that up against the body, I think, so they won't try to get impede me trying to pull it back out. And that's what I'm worried about, really. Well, I can either use clay or mache. Mache would be good, it gets hard, it hardens up. Though. What it is, it's got a gap back there. I'm going to pack that full and then start making the mold. So, I'm thinking I might go with the shade instead of the clay. In all honesty, uh, man, I have a whole lot of shade. I have a whole lot of clay. So, yeah. In other words, I've got plenty, 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 plenty. It won't take that much. Let's mix me a slurry and fill it up in the back. Okay, to make my machete, uh, cellulose insulation, which is just chopped up newspapers. Um, you can get it at Lowe's, any of that stuff. And then, of course, Molding plaster. Just come up with some of that. I'm going to put enough that I know it's going to get hard so I don't have to sit there and mess with it. Mixing stick or a tongue depressor or a popsicle stick, whatever you want to call it. Water. Let's 
Mix this up until it's good and soft and put it in, let it get good and hard, which it will. told to take the gills out first, but if I can get away with not doing it, I will. Well, it ain't much, but start putting it in there and putting it all the way in the back. And I make it kind of strong so it'll set up real quick. I don't want to wait around on it in other words. I could have done this before I even uh, cut the head off the fish, but I did. So that's kind of my problem I got to do. So we're having to improvise. It's not like I'm making a mold that I'm going to reuse and reuse and reuse. I'm just going to make it one time and then uh, all fits. Make sure it's down in there real nice and good as it is. Then we get more and just uh, keep doing the same thing. So you little insulation, molten plaster, until I've got enough to fill all that in right there. So look out for the head. It's full mache back here. And I even bond over a piece of extra. And I want to make sure I get all the head. But now I'm worried about uh, well, here's what I gotta do. I got to uh, fill his mouth up. He wants an open mouth. So I gotta fill that up with the shade, I guess. And just kind of smoothen it off. Yeah, I'm using popsicle sticks to kind of pry his mouth open. And I'm just gonna fill it with mache. Uh, he wants an open mouth. He wants it like, uh, I guess, trying to eat another catfish. So it's uh, kind of a little bit of a cannibalism type thing. What he wants. So, uh, I'm gonna fill his mouth full of mache. Hey, I got the head on the side of the table, and uh, I got some popsicle sticks holding his mouth open. Uh, you know, kind of like how I think it needs to be. I'm just gonna cram his gills full of mache. Pour that in there. usually show up so uh, hopefully that'll come out pretty good kind of my first rodeo on this so it's uh, I don't know if it's necessarily a great idea now, my goal is to make him go in and out as easy as possible so places where it might would hook I'm gonna get some like, real soft clay Maybe uh, it'll work. I'll put some stuff in there. I don't know. This is so soft, it won't even. Let's see. Uh, this will be my first head. 
and the mold's only going to be used once, so it's not like I'm going to be keeping on using it. You know? so basically, I want it to go in and out as easy as possible. And doing the head is different than doing like the whole body of a catfish, so kind of got that to worry about a little bit. Because it's not a two part mold. His head is dropping down in. So anything that'll catch, I'm trying to get that out of the way. His head will drop in and pull right back out. That's kind of what we got going on. Okay. Uh, See, like right here, there's a little indention. Uh, I'll have to spray a little bit of water there. Basically, I don't want his head catching on anything. And so that's why. I don't know that. I'm saying I'm new at this. The alginate may be, get, may be able to get a little. You know, may get a little. I don't never worked with it, I don't know how fragile it is. But I'm assuming it's not very tough. And there's kind of a dent that came up here anyway, I guess where the head's getting a little old. So uh, I'm just gonna take care of that right now. I can. Just a little bit. Just, uh, just so it comes out really good. That's all I'm worried about. And uh, any extra manicuring, I can do myself, you know. After his head pops out of the mold, I can do all that manicuring myself. And I don't care a bit to do it. After this, I'm going to give it a shot because, uh, I mean, people do it, so it's, it's doable, you know what I mean? So. And then this head will reach its final resting place, which will be the crash can if we get all this done. So. I know there's a little bit of flexibility to it because it's, you know, it's a real head, so that's actually maybe something that's working for us. But he wasn't dented real big right here, and I didn't want to kind of make sure we had that squared away before, you know, too much trouble here. But yeah, I'm looking for places where the skin would stick or something. Impurities, I guess you could say. Um, I want to use the least amount possible, but. I think I'm good with that. I think I'm good with that. Got some popsicle sticks in here. They can come out. That's what we got. Yeah. Kind of look, you can see what's going on. The head's full of mache all the way to the top. I'm going to leave the gristle of the teeth, I think, a little bit. That may be a mistake. 
I may rub a little bit of clay over that, over the grist on this teeth. A lot of times when you see molds, they're, uh, it looks like they manufactured the teeth, like they made them or something a little bit. So, it makes I don't know this one says mix to desired consistency but at the same time it says mix 50 50 volume with water to desired consistency so if it's 50 50 volume it should have one consistency you think here's another one this is the alginate a uh, different brand uh, oh yeah it'll work definitely enough thank god Okay, uh, now I think I'm supposed to like just add water or something. Okay, desired consistency. I don't know what the consistency is supposed to be, but I will mix it together. Mm, definitely want more than that. Definitely a lot more than that. That's got to be getting pretty close. One turns paint, one turns blue. Needs more water. making a purple slurry because somehow one of it's uh, that luna bean stuff is supposed to turn it pink the other turns it uh, to uh, other one's paint one blue you're gonna get a wild ball looking mixture here for sure and this stuff is supposed to harden up pretty quick so I guess as soon as it starts to harden up I'm going to drop it down in there okay well it's mixed up good enough for me I think Hard it's supposed to be mixed and all that stuff so there's definitely more than enough I do know that and I'm gonna drop it down in there oh shoot have to go sideways with it let that sit up for a while and I'll get back with you okay uh got to uh, have a little trouble getting it out but I'll uh, use whatever I can to get it to come out okay uh, this I'll grab hold of that oh yeah okay all right now 
I'm gonna hurry up and start mixing some Bondo real quick and putting it in there. I'm gonna try my best not to do another hit or not to have to do it over again, but I've got the head in case I need to. But I hope I don't. So I'm gonna see what it looks like. Hopefully it comes out decent. I'm probably gonna have to do this several times. I'm not worried. I'm just lumping on top of each other. If it gets hard, then I'll put some fresh stuff over the top of it. Start mixing it up real good. Small head, fish head's okay, but good lord. Big fish like this. Um, you gotta, I don't even really have the right tools to be doing it with. I'm pouring this straight down into it. This is the Bondo. I got some uh, generic Bondo, I guess is the right word. It's not Bondo, it's generic version. We're going to go ahead and start getting some of it uh, out also. And that's pretty good for a start there. Okay, that's plenty, plenty. The more hardener the better because uh, I spent a lot of time trying to get that stuff to uh, mix up, you know. Uh, so, yeah, this is the way to do it. With a, a spatula is the way to do it. Sure enough, it is. Yes, sir. And we just keep mixing a bondo till we get him completely full. Coming along, getting close to the end of it. But uh, I think we got the method down now. Just let that stuff drip down in there. Well, I'll get back with you when we got him filled back up. And we'll see what the mold looks like. Or the cast, I should say. Not the mold, the cast. Okay, uh, I got it full with Bondo. I'm going to let it get hard and see what we got. Okay, I'm going to give it a shot and see what it looks like. Um, oh, God. Let's see. Good thing about this alginate seat just tears right off. So uh should be able to you know even if it doesn't come out looking good, which it don't look bad, it ain't perfect. I'm gonna cover all these little marks and stuff. I can see where his eyes went. I can make that work, believe it or not. Um, you look real close. The basic shape is still there. There's where the whiskers came out. There's where the eyes. This is going to get a coat. All this is going to get coated with the, I don't know if use caulk. Coat all that and smoothen it off. It's going to work, in other words. It don't look like it, but it will. You can see with the, there's where his gills were. All this didn't come out right, but I can work it with it. We're going to manicure that, put whiskers back on it. As far as the body, we're going to work on the head in just a bit, but I'm going to go ahead and start well, getting all my stuff off. 
you know the drill. I've done it several times. All the plastic comes off. Clothes pins all comes off. It served its function. Paper clips comes right off. You just get on a rockfish or something, which is what I used it first originally on. Okay, this stuff comes out. All these pins. Might have to, uh, you know, grab you a, a pliers or something, a little extra grip, you know, to get this stuff out. I'll reuse these for something else myself. Reuse these later. Down here, we got these. Oh, they can come out on the other side. Everything I've used here is reusable. And it will be reused for something. Looks like I'm not alone when it comes to uh, the idea of using Bondo for a head, but whew, these fish are so huge. Um, you really need a light head. The lighter, the better, in other words. So that's kind of what we got going on. All the pins coming out. Paper clips, clothes pins, everything you used, it'll come right off. Okay, uh, even here on the uh, adipose fin, you know, I didn't want it to shrink to nothing. You can even build that adipose pin up with the caulk or whatever. these closed pins come out. <clears throat> well, uh, you get the idea. I'll finish taking the rest of these pins out and I'll show you what we're going to do next. Okay, you got a lot of this head. We got a Dremel out. And I'm going to have to cut some of this up out up here, but it's real heavy and I'm wanting to get, I'm wanting to get that core dremeled out. So I'm going to put him in here and maybe wedge some old shirts or something for a little bit of support. And I'm going to start dremeling this guy out. And I got just like a little uh, bit that cuts through wood. I'm going to start making a bunch of holes going real deep. And what that will do is uh, I got to make him lighter. So I got to take off as much bone as I can take out of this. I'm going to take it out. And basically, I just got one of these that, you know, cuts through wood and stuff. It might not be a bad idea to wear like a face mask for this stuff. I'm just going to start dribbling this stuff out. Oh, this stuff breaks weird. I'm going to be doing that, and I'll get back with you a little bit later. Okay, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of the top of the head off so it can mesh good with the top of the form, and uh, it'll be a good match then. So all this, I marked it with a marker. I'm going to cut all that off. And uh, I'm using a jigsaw. And I should be able to cut through all this. Okay. 
time to work on dremeling this stuff out using dremel tools drill bits everything to get off what i need to get off and uh then i'm just gonna pop that stuff out if i can basically you gotta break through you can see where i dremeled all the way around i want to hollow all this stuff out uh, for one thing it's going to make it lighter but it's also going to be a good fit i want to get where it's a good fit and i'm going to dremel the mouth part out too so i'm going to take out some uh, i'm going to dremel that out too so uh i'm going to take some of the weight out and that's what we're worried about is just all the weight way too much weight and now after i dremel the back out um which i still need to do a little bit more and uh, i can come back in this is the mouth area i'm gonna dremel this stuff out too uh, a lot easier to use the right stuff for one not bondo and also uh uh, use the uh, stuff that's made specifically for cast and uh, you're going to come out a lot better or a, a reproduction be a lot easier well here's kind of what I got so far in the back kind of hauling him out so the form can fit in there nicely uh, got a lot of work to do yet but we're going to be working on the mouth too here so that's my next project well, I'm pretty much done. This is what I got. And see, there's where his eye went. And the whiskers are going to come off. He's going to have a, he's going to have a fish in his mouth, so I'm not going to pay much attention to all that other stuff. But to get him to stick to the form, I got my foam form. I'm going to drill two holes right up here up top. Um, and these are going to be for, it's going to, Take into the uh, into the mold or into the form is what I'm getting at. So I got to drill two holes, which will be super easy. I just sit right here and I'll probably bond them in. That's a good technique to bond them in. And, uh, it's actually not too long, really. And then I put another one right over here. I'm gonna put at least two. Yeah, usually I'll put a wire or two up top, and uh, it's just a hold the head up top and that's how it's going to be and then it's going to push right into the form where it's all foam and uh, you'll see that here in just a second so I'm going to go ahead and glue or bond all these in got a little hot glue put some down in these holes that I've made Try to line it up as good as I can. And make sure that's good and stiff. And yeah, I think it's about right. Okay, whoops. turn to it too so about right here yeah oh that's perfect there we are 
We'll glue that real good. And that's kind of like a start of what he's going to look like a little bit later. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and card the fins. And you watch me do this several times. You kind of know the drill. So I just... Uh, More about final trimming later, but you get the idea. There we are. There's the tail. Then we get the soft dorsal in here. Oh, yeah. is for the like the pelvis this is definitely the pelvis fin for the fish I'll put F for front that simple B for back so I don't get them mixed up and that's just how I roll I like to do it like that Okay, F for front, B for back, uh, let's see, pelvic, let's see if we can get it, I don't want that sticker, so definitely don't want that sticker on there, so this is definitely the dorsal. the dorsal you put D for dorsal so you don't get it mixed up with like an hand fin or something or pectoral or something and we got this one you're gonna I'm gonna do a good job for it let's see there we are That was the pec, pectoral, or just pec, either, either one. We'll get the manicure in later. There we are. The manicure up later. That's my uh, anal fin, my welded contact cement. And I put one coat on the fin and one coat on the cardboard. It just really does seem to work out good that way. And then you let the both pieces just kind of vaguely dry a little bit. And nothing will take them apart. Tail, dorsal, pelvic, tail while I'm back here, or the anal, I'm sorry. Okay, got those around. I grab my cardboard. And I'll start putting some on here. I 
And then you let this stuff dry for a long time. And as long as they're a little bit tacky, um, they'll go together real good. And uh, um, I'll glue them before I cut them out. It works out. It's easier and less messy for me. If I go ahead and put the glue first with a brush, then worry about cutting them out afterwards. It just works out a lot better for me if I do that. Now, a lot of times I'll make little cuts. I'll show you. Sometimes it helps. I'll show you what I mean. Let me go ahead and get all these. And uh, you put these two pieces together after they are uh, been dried for a while and, and a little bit tacky. Um, they, they ain't coming apart. I mean, it's pretty stout stuff, I guess you could say. Right here at the tail, sometimes it's beneficial to... It, just, it helps the cardboard bend in areas where it needs to bend. And I'll tend to, you know, just yeah, any place where you may have a problem with it, you know, like right here. Um, you can if you want to. A lot of people don't go that far back with the carding anyway. A lot of people just get maybe the outer two thirds. Um, that kind of on what you're used to, I guess. All and how you want to do it. Like I said, some people's outer two thirds is all they card in the fin anyway. So. Kind of dry. It's still got a little bit of a shiny look, but it's not real like wet looking, I guess. And they, uh, now I just start cutting them out. And this steel is not your final cutout. So basically what I'm doing now is just uh, getting where I can manage it. This glue is strong. Get it, match it up as good as you can. Um, a lot of times I like to start on one corner and then work my way to the other side. It just seems kind of better that way. Help get some of those warped fins out. You know, they, they curl and buckle a little bit if you don't get to them pretty soon. And I did let them kind of curl and buckle a little bit. But that's what the glue is for. And the cardboard, it will fix all that stuff. And if you got a place that's a little cantankerous, <clears throat> a lot of times you can put a little bit of a, just for a little bit, you know, a little bit of a, something like that, kind of help it. Here's a spot. That flattened out pretty good though. So, right here on the end. Now a lot of times you can go kind of like in between the rays and it will mash that cardboard down a little bit where it touches a lot easier. And right in between the rays. I use the back of a paintbrush or something usually. And, uh, and we'll go down to the uh, next 
the way I like to roll. That's the way I like to roll with it. And you can tell it's uh, pretty good. I did a pretty good job. And in between the rays, you can help it stick a little bit better by doing that. Seems to help get in between the rays. There we are. Or even cut them out. And it's just it's a lot less hassle for me to do that. So that's kind of what I got going on there. Just make sure it's on there real nice and good. All the way to the ends. Get in between those rays. Let it stick real good all the way to the ends. start on the outside, start pushing, and then work my way in, start pressing it together. You seems like you can, you get your better spread that you're trying to get. Um, you start on the outer edge on one side, and then work your way across. Let's see if I get this a little bit better. Your front pelvic pin. job when you can. You know, when you can always helps. Spread that fin out real good. See, it's kind of buckle a little bit. It's kind of good that I did it the way I done it. I know I got this at some kind of kit or something, but like the back of a paintbrush or something. You can run this in between the rays and help that glue stick to not only the rays but in between the rays. It just makes an all around better better job for you. I'm gonna trim it anyway, so we're gonna get as good as it can possibly get. I want to get as good as I can. Obviously. Okay. There again, start on one corner, start pushing it down, and meet up on the other. That'll work. And then we can get the back of your paintbrush, whatever you got. Get in between the rays and get that stuff matted down in there. Make sure the ends are mashed down real good. Some people put on the edge of a table and use a little mallet, even tap them down. I've seen them do that. trim these. You can hold it by the stick, although this is kind of a heavy fish. I wouldn't do it, but I'll uh, just 
kind of go along with the, I guess, the shape of the fin. The right way to put it. Seems like it helps to use the, the last two thirds of the of the scissors for shaping a little bit. See why it helps. Come here. Then you go back with a razor blade and you can do a better job. Right here, the pelvic fin. So you get a general idea of the shape of the fin and you just let it ride right there where the fin stops and you get your shape. Uh, a lot of times it's according to what the fin looks like. Here in front. Did you get the idea? Let's see. Here's the door, so I may have to turn the fish or something to get to that. Here we are with this one. shape of the fin okay well try to And remember, we'll go back with a straight edge razor too, so that'll, that'll make things a lot easier for us. Okay, now here on the edges, where you have got a little bit of like cardboard that we couldn't get with the scissors, get a straight edge razor blade and manicure it up, get right up. Um, right up against that fin. Right here you can see places where I went over. Um, I'll tend to kind of like ride a little bit at an angle or something. Seems like it helps. You get the idea. Okay, now we're going to wad some paper towels down in his mouth. Start dropping them down in there like you would a real fish, like when you're painting his gills. Yeah, it's basically the same thing as what I'm doing. Uh, make sure that stuff's in there real good. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah. I'm going to face his head down. Okay, I got some expanding foam. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there, um, on the market. I think you got to shake it vigorously for a little while. Uh, let's see. Uh, directions. To become familiar with this. I feel rough opening. Okay. I think you got to shake it, though. Okay, continue. Okay, 
it expands uh I've had bad luck with this stuff because it expands so much it always i i misjudge how much it expands i've over expanded on fish and stuff so but basically all this right here i want to fill out okay with my expanding foam i just want to fill this head up Okay, this stuff really expands that too so I'm sure I've got more than I already need right now uh, yes and that's probably more than I'll ever even use right there so So, okay. Wow. Now you'll see this stuff will expand so much it's uh it's gonna be out of control it expand so much so and it don't take long the nozzle to get clogged up for sure I think it's already clogged up there it goes now I'm good with it and we'll let that sit and I'll get back with you. It'll swell ungodly. It's going to fill up all that in the head and probably make for even a, you know, a better head connection. But it does. It swells ungodly. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and dress up the fins. And uh, I'm going to put a little bit. Oops. I didn't need much anyway. On there, but just need to get a little caulk there. Uh, wet my brush down or the caulk itself, and uh, that water has a way of uh, dissolving the caulk where it's in thin, thinner. <clears throat> See, I'm brushing it. I'm I'm mimicking thin rays. Is what I'm doing. And uh, so we just uh, you've got this fin right here. I put, it, which is not going to take much, really. You caulk itself. And, uh, of course, you. Move that on there first, make sure it's getting on there. Of course, then you then you go back down exactly the way the rays go, and you make your fin rays. That's, that's how we do it. Kind of what we got going on. Just smoothing that out first, and then once you get it where you kind of want it, then uh, start making the rays.
so forth. Very little latex caulk. Um, the siliconized caulk dries faster, um, but um, at least you see what you've done with this stuff because it's a, you know, it's white, uh, solid white. So okay, make sure it's on there good first. No, nice and good on there. Now, there for a little bit, it looks like. And can uh, just mimic fin rays. Um, go with the fin. You can see the fin rays on the end. You can see how they how they do. On a real fish, you can see it. In other words. You just try to try to get it as good as you can. Okay, I've got some places where I got like super small holes, and uh, like when they're real small, I just get a little bit of caulk on my finger and uh, do it just like that. Here's one, no biggie, see. And it's going to get painted anyway. Um, but like here at the tail, you may see some impurities. Uh, you may need to take some of those out. Like right there, it's kind of indented. And right here is a big dent. And we'll see, you can fill those dents in, see? And uh, just, it's going to, may take a little bit to do it, but... Uh, Okay, you, you got them. Um, can build up my adipose where it's shrunk down. There's all kinds of good things you can do with this caulk. I'll show you what I mean. Like uh, right here. Uh, right there. Put a little bit of water on my finger. Um, just try to fill in the void. That's basically all I'm doing. And uh, make a little bit more of a smooth transition. Um, use popsicle sticks, uh, cardboard pieces sometimes. They'll make them act like makeshift little uh, smootheners, you know, I've done that before. And, uh, And you see any places where you got blemishes that you want to fix? Um, just have at it. Right here, I could probably use a little bit right in, I guess right in there. Use a little bit. And and what places? Any place that needs a. Uh, be filled in any damage work or whatever. Um, 
A little bit of this goes a long way towards fixing it. You can build up the adipose. Um, I usually don't worry that much about it, but you can build it up a little bit. And just get a little water on your finger and start to kind of add some volume to it. This is the right word. Uh, you can get like a piece of cardboard if you wanted to and let it do your work for you. I actually do better with cardboard than I do my fingers. Just whatever you got to use to get done what you got to get done. By all means, um, use it. Go for it. And uh, you're satisfied with the results? Let it go. We've got two part epoxy sculpt. Uh, this is some white stuff, or, or pretty close to white. And uh, you just mix two two equal parts, A and B. Um, here's some more of it right here. Uh, two equal parts. And I got it right here. It's not mixed up yet, but I'm working on it. And I like to add water to it. Um, if, if it's white, I add water. Um, and if I'm working on a deer or something, I'll use the lacquer thinner because lacquer thinner really thins it down. So, you just add the two parts together and eventually it gets real soft where you can work with it. And what we're going to do, we're going to cover up some of these blemishes while that foam is still doing its thing and expand it. Um, so, just a little bit of water. I keep putting water in it, and it's already getting a lot softer. Um, and, uh, I'll make a little bit of a reservoir there, put a little, spray a little water down in it, close it back in, keep adding moisture to it, wants to thin out a lot better. And it's already pretty well mixed, I think, for the most part. That's not quite, but just keep doing that and make it good and thin. And just keep working on it and putting water in it and mixing it. And I'll get back with you here in a little bit. And other places on the mouth that are a little bit unsmooth and I may try to fill in some of those gaps with this epoxy scope. Uh, it's real good for filling in bad spots. And see so right there. It does have a little bit of a dent, but not that not supposed to be that pronounced. Basically anywhere you see like little grooves I'm gonna have to Smoothing it up with a epoxy sculpt. Right there. And that's where one whisker is going to come out right there. Places where there's gaps, they've got to go. They've got to. We got to take those gaps out. Um, here's one. So all these little gaps, got to fill them in. A couple of gaps down through here that's got to come out. Um, It's filled in. And 
and you can use a if you have to you can use caulking also to get rid of some of that stuff but we'll be doing some machining anyway this right here the mouth came out a little bit flat where it bottomed out uh, when we were making the mold but that's no biggie uh, we'll get it epoxy sculpt and latex caulk will take care of us Well, I keep doing that. Taking out any little pockets you see with a epoxy sculpt or caulk or whatever you got to work with. Okay, we got some of that foam that I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off. See if it's got a little bit too much. And I've been using epoxy sculpt trying to smooth out some of the roughness. I don't think this foam is completely dry yet, but it's a lot better than it was. See, that's just what it turns into, the spray foam does. Creeping on, it's still gonna probably keep on swelling for a little while, anyways. You see where I've been using epoxy coat, building up the lip and doing whole nine yards. That's uh, it's getting where it's looking better, but still got a lot of work to do. Okay, we got a little bit of. Uh, now that, the gill broke away right here. i got to replace that, so I need that to stay there, if at all possible. Let's see. Whoops. Yep. Okay. Now, kind of want to come in. Let's see. better okay, so this where gills are going to go right here
Okay, you can kind of see what I'm trying to do, I think, a little bit. Um, I'm going to rebuild some stuff because his head wasn't a super fit, good fit. So, having to uh, do what I can to make it fit. Doing whatever I can to make it fit. I'll show you a different view or just a little bit of what we're kind of what we got going on here. And you use a dremel tool and dremel this stuff down too if you got to. That's my next option if I need to. And we'll end up having to, we're going to be tipping him over and coming from underneath, obviously. But definitely fun, I'll tell you what. Okay, got a little bit of clay here. Uh, trying to minimize how much water I get on the skin. Uh, you know, I hadn't sealed it or anything, and it's doing weird things, you know, from the water that's on it. So, trying not to get a whole lot of water on it, but I will get water on the, my popsicle stick, though. And use it to kind of try to help me to yeah. spread it and everything. Do what I got to do with it. Because when you get water on it, it starts buckling. Uh, it's got a little bit different nature than like bass skin and all that. Uh, it just, uh, well, I didn't seal it either, so some of that is my fault. But. Basically, I'm just making a... Okay, there's the skin there. Okay, there. 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 Okay. I don't want too much water on the skin if I can keep it from it. Obviously, that's kind of what I'm doing here. Um, but, yeah, definitely everything else. I'm trying to... Moving it out and uh, put the right amount, make it good and flush. Now, I might should have sealed it with the, you know, sand and sealer first, get a little bit of backbone so it's not going to buckle as bad. But I think it would have buckled anyway, probably. But I'm not sure. Okay.
I get the back of a piece of cardboard and seem, they seem to do good when they got like a little bit of a rough edge. Um, really try to smooth that out. Not so worried much about underneath, just what's on top. So I can smooth this guy out without running into a whole lot of trouble. That's what my goal is. Whoops, you want to do that. Okay. okay. With a little bit of luck, that's going to look like skin. some of that foam too. And everything else we're going to do from underneath. Popsicle stick again. Make sure it's good and wet. Okay, and we're going to let that dry and see what it looks like. Okay, yeah, I'm like right down here. Uh, use a wet Q-tip and get that caulk in there to blend in real good and everything. And we're about ready to turn this guy over. Start working on him from underneath. His lower jaw and all that uh, needs a lot of work. Okay, now, luckily, I have a replica of the, of the same fish, or at least the same length, um, to go by. Yeah, not the, not the same fish, but definitely the same length. And that helps. Um, 
So we've got all my detail for the we got all my detail for the for the lower jaw, which it was real bad on here. I mean there was you got a little bit of right here, which is right there on this one. And after that, uh, yeah, basically nothing through here. So all this has got to be built up. All this extra foam has got to be cut off. And it's just a, it's a lot of work. I've got to maul the bottom of the jaw to make it look like this one. You know, to have her a chance that at least it's going to look like a reproduction head. And so got to do, do a lot of the back and filling in behind the back. So I still got my work cut out for me. I'm going to do the back the same way. Um, there's some gaps where I skid him out back here. Um, I'll fill those in. There's a big one right there. Uh, that's where he was at. Pinned. So, with all this, there's a big old gap can be filled in. There's a big old gap. What I'm getting is, is all this can be filled in. And a lot of times you use caulk, or, and, but you can also use epoxy sculpt in some of these places. And it just kind of depends on what you want to use. But let's face it, caulk is cheap. So uh, you've got that going for you. And then I was taught to use paper towels and contact cement on the paper towels and all that, uh, which you can do. Uh, basically, you dab one side of the paper towel and then you do this with contact cement and then you merge them together and they will never come apart. Just like we did on the fins. Same concept. Same glue. So, yeah, it's the same thing. But yeah, I'll even I'll go right to the end of where the wood's together like that. Now this catfish skin does not act like a regular fish skin. It buckles and wrinkles and all kinds of stuff. I guess because it doesn't have scales. Uh, the whole thing is a different, different beast. But yeah, I just try to. It's a neat job. Uh, a lot of times you can cover those staples up and make them where they're not noticeable, and which is awesome. Get a little bit of water. Probably didn't hurt to put a little bit of water on there to get the caulk to spread. You don't want it sticking to the you want to be able to spread it, but I remember this is a catfish, and it does affect a little bit about how much of this water I use, I guess is the right word. You know, I don't want to use too much water. So, but, I'll do that. Stuff. Just try to make the back look neat. This is more cosmetic work for the back than anything else, really. Just trying to pretty it up a little bit. And I'm trying to minimize how much water I use on here. 
because it's affecting the skin so much. And so I don't like the way it's buckling and stuff. So I'm trying to do away with that. And uh, so basically, I'm going to keep this, keep this a little bit wet. Try to come down on the caulk. It's the caulk I want wet, not, not necessarily the skin. So, Of course, you do that side the same way. We're going to be working on the gills, though, for a little while. Okay, this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, just covering up the back. There's something back there. You can put a paint job on it and everything if you want to. A lot of times, I'll paint it a little bit dark. I always paint. I carve, when I carve my pens, you'll see a little bit later. I paint the cardboard on the back. I darken those up, too. Uh, it's, it's the back. No one's going to see it. I've got some stuff here. It's like uh, porcelain. I don't know what it's like, but it air dries. So I'm just going to start using it and seeing what I can uh, do with it. Uh, it's supposed to be like semi, I guess translucent, kind of semi-translucent when it dries. I like the way it feels. It feels like a, so I'm going to try to work with it while I can, if I can. And I'm using this as reference to a, uh, Try and come up with, uh, you know, getting it done. I don't know how long it takes or any of that stuff. But, I mean, epoxy sculpt is getting expensive. If I can use this. Oh, this is naturally smooth. Okay. I can dig that. Okay. Uh, you bow that out. It is, it's naturally smooth. I love that. Okay, that is that right there. That's that. Okay. Right there. Pocket scope is good if you got enough. Um, but there is cheaper ways. I guess you can go around doing it. But I'll get back with you a little bit later. Okay, kind of rebuilt the bottom of the jaws a little bit. So uh, I'm going to turn him over and put his eyes in, do his whiskers, and maybe a little bit of extra modeling work and all that good stuff. Uh, I got some sanding and stuff. Um, I got a Dremel tool. I'm going to try to finish the head and try to smooth him out quite a bit, to be honest with you.
see I'm kind of trying to smoothen some stuff out and I may put a little thin film of caulk or something over it to you know make it a little bit smoother so my object of my game right now I may have to use hand sandpaper and sand on him okay I got some I like the sanding sponges and uh, see I know where the gaps are the creases um, you know on the fish and I know it's supposed to be smooth um, and I know what it's supposed to uh, yep, that'd be the other side too so I'm just rounding everything off uh, not rounding everything off but see everything is sandable and paintable that uh, the epoxy is called sandable and paintable Bondo, of course, uh, any places where you see roughness, this is not easy, but I'm going to take all that roughness out. Um, I'm just going to probably accentuate some of the details that are already on it, but, you know, make them where they're a little bit more pronounced, maybe. I just got a groove tool with a little bit of a groove bit in it, so... Yeah, you can kind of see them already, the grooves already, you know? So I can see them. So basically just put them in. A little bit more. Okay, that's, that's about what we're going to get for me. All this don't need to be me, right? I'm going to have to cover that up. That's not supposed to be there, really. Um, so that's kind of what we got going on. Um, right. 
Let me dress it up a little bit with the put some coffin on them and put a dyes in those whiskers. Uh takes to do is I'm gonna do his whiskers before I do anything else. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the eyes. I've got me one of these little salmon uh I forget what you call it. You know, you sharpen things with it, smoothing things down. It's in the drum tool kits. That should be deep enough and we we'll put it on the other side in the same place. Now it's going to fit. Okay. Get my caulk again. Just sheets of caulk in there. Push my eye down in there. Face it kind of like up towards the upper lip a little bit. Maybe not that much, but... About like that. Yeah, that looks good to me. Of course, he's without whiskers yet, so. Yeah, I may uh, put a little bit more caulk in there. Dish bowl out. I tend to go in and bring it slightly down at the bottom, maybe. And something like that. Something like that looks pretty good. These are, I think, 18 millimeter eyes. Uh, as big as a catfish is. <clears throat> Their eyes aren't super big. And so they kind of, I guess they got a good sense of smell to make up for it. That would be my guess. I'm going to keep putting some water on it, uh, and then I'm going to try to take away any gaps that may be present. And sometimes you can let the caulk kind of build up behind it, let it dry, semi dry a little bit, and then push in a little bit deeper and it makes a good little ring around the eye. Um, I've done that before. It's one of several things you can do with these eyes to make them kind of stick out. You can also even buy, you know, kind of like the seat that the eye goes in. You what you call it. Be okay. Take her out a little bit. Sure you get um, as much of the eye to show as you can there. Uh, let's see, we'll a little bit down here could show a little bit better. Yeah, there we are.
worse and worse. Okay, and then we uh, do the other eye the same way. Looks like there's some light reflected, makes it look like there's a problem with the eye. I got me a little Dremel bit. It's a real small one. Um, and uh, basically, I'm going to make a hole for my wire, for whisker wire. Uh, looks like a piece of 18 gauge wire. And oh, it, it goes in there easily. Hey, I got a little super glue gel, which is always really good to have. And a little bit of this just on the end. Uh, definitely more than enough for as small as the hole is. And there we are. It ain't coming out. And. Yeah, that's, that's in there good. Yeah, that's just real thin 18 gauge wire. And it's uh, it's not very stout, but it'll do the job. These main big whiskers were 5 inches. I'm going to go right up to the... Uh... There we are. Okay, that's our first, our, our big whiskers. And let's see what else. Uh, remember I wrote down the measurement of the length. So now we're using the length measurements. Okay, now there's some uh, whiskers up here on top. They're an inch and seven eighths, but I gotta go ahead and drill the holes for those. And I can see where the not where they were. The not uh the one was right here. right here on this side and I can see the imprint where the whiskers were so that helps that couple of small wires, a uh, 18 gauge. I make them longer than what I know they're going to be and then I can always clip them off once I put them in. Okay, uh, cut me off some more wire longer than what I'll ever need and I uh, got my super glue gel. Uh, put it on the, probably put some down in there or whatever you got to do it. You put that in there where as deep as it's going to go and and we're gonna put we're gonna put we're gonna put the uh, bend in the whiskers to make it look more realistic. We're gonna do that a little bit later. Um, you know, it's gotta look like a real catfish. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Some people will use a weed whacker line and stuff like that. It's a, a weed eater line, stuff like that. So. Uh, people use different things. Uh, I don't try to get too out of the norm, you know what I mean? Um, if, uh, if I can get fine gauge wire to do the job for me, I'm not going to mess around with plastics. Try to keep from it. So, okay, then, uh, okay, we got a couple on the bottom too. Oh, yeah, also, they'll use a, a fishing line, like a heavy gauge fishing line. Um, something pretty heavy, 30, 40, 50 gauge line, and uh, you can do that too. I just use wire because that's what I've started out, you know, like doing on reproductions, I would use wire, so that's kind of why I'm sticking to that.
And I can see an imprint where I had the whiskers. So I'm going to go ahead and get them both. I did get them all, really. There's a big little knot right here where I cut the whisker off. And then there's two more over here. I'm just going to cut some wire, make sure it's longer, and glue them in, and then we'll start cutting them off. Okay, you got some bottom ones here. Um, the two outers are three inch, and the inner were two inch. And so I, I recorded all that so that I could know, you know exactly how long they are. Here's the outer one, it's a two incher. Got another two incher right here, another outer. You know, this super glue gel, it's a lot easier to work with than some of this other stuff. To which one is, and there we are. Five do for this one. There we are. I think we're in there. I think we're good to go. We'll let that dry for a while. Uh, it won't take long. Just. And we'll use uh, measurements to, uh, you know, cut them off to the right length, of course. The outer one's 5 inch. These up top are real small. They're only like an inch and 7 eighths. They're not even 2 inch. The bottom ones, the two inner ones are 2 inch. The outer ones are 3 inch. And of course, these big ones are 5 inch. So, that's what they are on this fish. Here we are. Okay, the bottom ones are three inches a piece. The outer is three inch. And the inners are two. Uh, the wire is too dark to use a marker, so I'm just going to use a measuring tape. Or my, yeah, my measuring tape. Put them at three inches. Let's see. They get them pretty accurate if I can. Okay. See how right there. Oh, perfect. Three inches on that one. Three inches on this one. Okay, and then uh, three inches on that one. Uh, two inches on these inner ones, which is pretty short. Okay, and then the upper ones were actually less than two inches even, so that's going to be something. I mean, sure they were good and long, looks like. Yeah, they're only a, what, an inch and seven eighths. Almost two inches, but not quite. So I'll come right here. Go to inch and seven eighths. Go to this one. Go an inch and 
seven, eight. There we are. Uh, let's see, then we start adding character to them. Yeah, I like the way the whiskers, the way I kind of have them kind of like blowing back up here. Um, I kind of like that. So I think I'm going to do the same thing and use this as a reference to bend my wires like how I want them. And uh, yeah, this is just a little old bullhead is what this is. But, yeah, I can use it for a reference. Okay, these top ones. It goes a little forwards. Uh, yeah, that goes down. Let's see. That's about the right pitch. Then it bends around. Yeah, I'm going to get too carried away with it, but... Then it bends over on the end. It does this. Yeah, that's about right. She adding a little bit of a little action to it. And about like that. And let's see. A little bit out this way though. To the side a little bit. Yeah, then do the other one the same way. But you definitely want don't want to put too much bend. I mean it's gotta be gotta make it look lifelike if you can. So And the other one does the same thing, kind of bends around. Probably easier to use person use a hand than anything. Slightly on the end there. There we are. And that one. That. This one out a little bit too. <clears throat> now for this whisker right here, out a little bit to the side. And then about halfway down, it starts to bend back. No, out. Well, more to the side than anything. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, here we are. That's actually pretty good, just like that. Okay. Maybe slightly up a little bit. That looks pretty good right there. 
No, actually more out to the side would be better. Yeah. So actually up. Yeah. Okay, hang on back. There we are. Something like that. That's a little bit too much. Okay. Too much. Okay. Well, you get the idea. You can use a reference picture. Another side and then back. Water's catching a little bit. There we are. Yeah, you can kind of mess with them and add some realism to them. Uh, this one bends. The feelers almost come straight down on this one and then start to maybe a little bit forwards, but then they start to bend back. Nothing, you know, extreme is, I guess, what I'm getting at. Yeah, that. And, of course, the bend at the end. I'm going to make that. Okay, about like that. Yeah, like that. This one does it too. A little bit shorter. Actually, yeah, you can bend the ends too much. You don't want to do that. Just, just a hair bit, yeah. They're all good and forwards and spread out. Maybe a little bit more spread out would be better. Yeah. Yeah, these could be spread out a lot more. Okay, about like that. Of course, these they bend also, and try to make them look realistic. Yeah, it's more about the bend, kind of like yeah, there we are. And then I do the other one the same way as this one. You want them to match. Yeah, 
Okay, you can add as much realism to it as you want there. Okay, again, I got my epoxy sculpt. Uh, two equal parts, A and B. Um, I'm just going to use water. This is a lighter colored. Um, I want to use a lighter colored if I can, I guess, maybe. <clears throat> Not sure how much it matters on the whisker, but I'm going to put a little bit of the uh, water in there, mix them up to equal parts, and make it a smooth consistency, and we'll start building up the bases of these um whiskers to make them look realistic you know i'll go out so far then i'll call it quits as far as how far you build out the whiskers you know so let's go out so far uh, no more than a third of the whisker probably is all it needs and then, uh, Two equal parts of the epoxy sculpt. Okay, that's on there pretty good. I usually just uh, kind of wrap it around a little bit. That's what I've been doing. Get it started that way. You can start smoothing it with water and your fingers and Start making it act like you want it to do it. Um, Give it all blend in real good. Lacquer thinner would be quicker, probably. Probably make it uh, thin down a lot quicker. But you get the idea. Or use a little bit of a modeling tool or something um, to get this stuff to do like you want it to do. You know. for it now. Well, oh, this is a bad piece in it. Okay. Okay. We're just giving a little bit of body to these whiskers, you know, so it's not just plain wire. And you want a little bit of something to it, so. And there again, a reference picture can tell you how far down, I'll give you a good idea how far you want to go with the uh, epoxy school. So keep that in mind too. Yeah, I think I just used latex caulk on that cat, that little one I did, but... Oh, yeah. Actually, that'd be better because it'd give it more of a lifelike feel. It had that rubbery-like feel. Mm-hmm.
just keep swimming it down with water. Is it water not hurting enough? And Do the other ones all the same way. Just build them up. Mainly on the ends. Uh, I guess you go about halfway up or something. Um, but use a good reference picture to show you how far to go with the uh, epoxy sculpt. Okay, here's what I got for the whiskers. Kind of worked them up a little bit. Added a little bit to them. And, uh, yep, that's what we got so far. And now I'm going to put some caulk on his head and try to smoothen some of those rough spots out. And I see a lot of little places. Um, you know, some of it may be a little bit of a sealer or something. Might take care of it, but... I'm just going to take care of what I can. Um, some pretty bad ones, too. That's the problem with these old Bondo heads. They, uh, yeah, they get a lot of impurities in them. And uh, you got to work them out. You see how that goes for starters. A little bit of water on my fingertip and uh, start working it in, covering these little impurities. And I can see them, the little bad spots where the bondo didn't get quite where it was supposed to get. And, and then you put a couple of seals on it, and it should take care of a lot of these, these little holes here and there in it. And, and I'm also trying to make sure things aren't don't get lumpy. Don't want lumps. No, no, no. So I'm gonna take care of what needs to be taken care of. And keep on the going. Probably have to do the whole head this way, but that's alright. We gotta get those uh, bad spots out of it. And seal him real good before we paint him, you know. And uh, actually, probably better off not using a glove. Probably. back up in that one. That was weird. At least that can happen. There's a little empty spot right here. Not the bump of your whiskers if you can keep from it. And uh, just keep going doing that. And I'll see what we got when we're done. Here's what I got so far. Um, I'm going to have a bluegill in his mouth so you won't be able to see much in his mouth. I'll throw some black paint in there. Spray some black paint in there and make it look dark. And uh, I'm going to put a couple of coats of... Uh, um, sand and sealer on there. Um, hopefully they'll take some of the small stuff out. Uh, like the super small holes and what have you. 
but here's what I got so far and uh, yeah we're gonna make it work I'm gonna fill in a couple of bad spots here underneath well here's what I got so far I rebuilt the whole bottom of the throat um, got his whiskers his lips kind of built up um, any places that were rough for the most part I tried to get a little bit of caulk put over it and I'm going to put several coats of uh, base coat sealer on it, but I'm going to let all this dry and I'm going to insert, I'm going to make some gills and put some gills in him, and then it's going to be ready to paint. I know it's got to come down uh, below the gills, I do know that, so I know i got to dremel some of it out, so... deep I need to go but you know the gill flat covers the gills pretty good I think so I'm going to go in at least three eighths of an inch or something I think uh soon anyway Yeah, got my Dremel tool. It's the only thing I got really that I got to make some kind of gills or something. I, I don't know. I've got to try something. Um, and I know you can order them. But if you don't have time to order them, then uh, that, that's, that's a pretty bad situation to be in. No, that don't look like you, man. Really. If you can come up with something pretty good, uh, let me know. How are looking? Yeah. Well, this is all I can think of right now. I know they got, if I had time, you know, I'd order some gills, which I probably do. But that looks pretty good. But I know a lot of people have ways that they make them and everything. So I'm going to let that ride for now. It's going to be painted red and on the inside anyway. But I'm going to like dust him off and start putting some uh, 
sealer on him. I got a sanding sealer. I like to put a lot of coats of that on. And then I can put base coat sealer on before I start painting and seal him up real good, you know. Kind of like I did the uh, the grass carp. The same thing. Got some sand and sealer here. And what I want to do, uh, you know, after he's good and dry and uh, <clears throat> before I paint him, let's put this sand and sealer everywhere, all over him. Put it on the whiskers even. His mouth. Get those fins real good. sure you get these areas where you did a lot of repair work and everything go ahead and get those real good did a lot of repair work in there right down here I did Still got my sand and sealer. I turned him upside down so I can get the bottom real good. And just make sure I'm coating everything. Um, I'll do this several times. Several. Yeah, if you got streaks and stuff, make sure you get those out. Uh, sometimes, you know, it'll drop, it'll drip, you know, down the side a little bit. Make sure you get rid of those streaks. You got to kind of watch it. Uh, the little droplets and little, you can see where it's a dripping down the side of the fish. You might want to double check that stuff. Keep the droplets off of it it's, uh, if you can. I'll end up putting about, uh, I don't know, three or four more coats at least on there. Um, just kind of, it's a good sealer. It seals the fish. Everything uh, does a real good job. I've sealed the fish with sand and sealer. Uh, but yeah, you can use base coat sealer also. Seal the whole fish. Uh, now I've got my white. I'm just going to white everything. Um, there's other colors that I'm needing to put on, or uh, this is the re. Uh, this is the on the reproduction. This is the mount that I did earlier. So, what better one to use a paint schedule on than a real fish? Although I do have a reproduction to do also. You get a can of spray paint and save you time, probably. Uh, you know, just more volume coming out. Or if you got like a bigger airbrush, you know, that'll help too. I mean, a bigger compressor. Of got a lot more air. I'm going to go ahead and paint him white, and then I'll show you what we do. Okay, yeah, it's definitely. Uh, go ahead and pearl the fish now. Um, 
I just got white pearl. I already got the belly underneath while it was while the belly was up. When I was all of it exposed, when I was painting white, I went ahead and got the next color on it. Uh, white pearl. Make sure it had that good looking curly effect. Fish like this, I might take a couple of bowl pulls. Get that good curl look on there. It's actually looking pretty good. It's going on there pretty good. Well, I had to darken my picture. Uh, this is the one I like the best. Uh, it's more gray than anything, but there is traces of blue and violet in it. So this is the one I'm going by as far as a reference. Um, just being flat blue uh, on the back in various shades is not quite doing it for me. Uh, the fish I had was really gray, uh, but I know they got blue in them a little bit, but yeah a more of a gray look is more accurate for me and my and the fish that i had to do i've got like a striper gray and then i know i can add colors you know on top of that fade out at the upper belly. Definitely want to get around the, uh, the face. Let me show you how, uh, let me try to show how I do that.
the belly up. You can also lock up places on the face where you feel like maybe you shouldn't have gone or something. And you can still fix a lot of stuff right there, you know. Yeah, this is proper gray. It's the only gray I got, really. But it looks pretty accurate. Right here, that uh, got a lot of the. Uh, you still see the lateral line a little bit, and it sinks down below the lateral line. Go around the eyes and kind of come back up a little bit. Um, you know, I'm going to keep here at way with the, uh, with the gray, but the other color is going over the gray. Of gray, so I don't think I'm going to run out anytime soon. So I'm not going to have to worry about being generous with it. I'm 
I'm going to go ahead and gray up all the fins also. the belly back up anyway, but, uh, you know, just kind of help out if we can. Bring everything up. Try to hit it from 
every angle that you got to hit it from. Um, in the back here. According to my reference picture, uh, <clears throat> well, the gray does look a little bit like a blue, I guess you could say. But, um, I kind of want to really go out with this color. Um, you know, one one schedule that somebody had. Uh, had it using selfish blue. Another had it just using um, ocean blue. So I've got ocean blue, selfish blue, and I even got what's just called blue. That would have probably been my best bet. This is from another taxidermy supply company. But I probably want to go sparing with this. It don't take much for gray to look good. So, keeping that in mind. Some people want you to paint a fish more blue when it's younger and use the paints gray all by itself if it's an older fish. Well, it's already starting to look kind of blue. It doesn't take much. looks basically like a blue fish already.
think about using either Payne's gray or black. I've got black, but I know if I put it on light enough, it's going to look just kind of like a deep blue anyway. And if I put it on light enough. Oh yeah, still the camera real good. Yeah, that's gonna work. I'm holding that blue down, that uh, that gray. Well, it's kind of stropper gray. I guess it's a hint of blue green or something. In it. detail in the face. along the back I guess I got my black
I got my wad again. <clears throat> I'm just gonna make sure I got my belly good and wide. Okay, I've got a little paint spray. It's like a dark blue, almost like a black blue. Well, that's called a paint gray beyond me. But kind of angle spray to bring out the fins. And uh, I do all the fins that way. I'll probably do that. Uh, let's see before I get high at the other fins. The paint gray looks just about like a black, really. So, of course, I highlight the fin rays.
Ben Gary is a pretty good cut, it looks like. Some people use, a, use it a lot. And they have pretty good looking catfish from what I've seen, so. Pretty good right there. Do the tail, uh, have to readjust it to do the tail. Okay, still got my pains gray. Darkening, well, I got him like this, and I will darken his back. Well, as with all fish, the darkest part of the fish is going to be the very top of the back and the head. You know, the very part of the back as well.
Where tone in the fish is going to be uh, a little bit of a judgment call. Hopefully, you get reference pictures involved.
you have to repaint the belly, right now is a good time to do it. Yeah, it's a good, good time to do touch up work. You know. uh, I got to get in between the bar bottles. Take a look at the overspray. I'm a little too happy with it. I've got a little bit of violet. I'm not throw just a hair bit of it. I mean, I see it. You know, you know, in varying degrees, not much, just just lightly, but I do see it.
far as violet. No more violet. Not one a hair bit overboard anyway. Well, I still got my violet. I'm also a little bit. A little bit on the uh, anal fin. Just change the color a little bit. About like we did to the body of the fish. Same with the, uh, the anal fin. Or the pickle fin. Okay, now we're going to. There is some flesh on the mouth. The lips. We're going to get flesh on the lips. It's natural flesh. I know it looks really bad in there. I'm going to put a fish in his mouth. <coughs> and I'm going to paint back in there with black. Kind of make it where you can't see anything much. Although this isn't a real fish, um, you can see the flesh that they use on the lips, a little bit on the lower jaw. Uh, the, the leading edges, or the, it looks like the very edges of the fins. Um, got it, or one paint schedule calls for that. Looks like they might have used white instead. So that's how I'm done. I'm gonna outline the bottom fins with a little bit of that flesh and see what happens. sideways and touch up the fins a little bit on the bottom, just the lower fins. Oh well. Oh that shows the fins though. Okay. Look at the edges. Yeah, let's see how does he got there? Yeah he's got it all the way around. Okay the very not in the very very
this here to me. Throw a little bit of color with the gear red. And we're going to paint the gears. Okay, I put a little uh, flesh. Um, I think that's out of the frame, but uh, you can see where I trimmed. Uh, put a little bit of flesh, I guess, on the end of the uh, anal fin, ventral fins, all the bottom fins. Put a little bit on the lower jaw. But, Here's another step I'm supposed to do. Uh, from the lower belly, which should still be locked filled from the floor, but I'm supposed to come up with that white and just come up on the sides of it. And I didn't do that, but now I'm doing it. I'm going to 
spray from the rear a little bit. Bring out some favorable details, like lower lip stuff. That's something I'm very tempted to do. I think I'm going to do it. Um, it's dark in the very, very edge of these upper fins. I mean, it's very loud. I mean, where you can't even tell it's been done, aren't you? Russian left in one. That's all right. That's your work with it.
Well, when you mess around with a little bit of yellow ochre on the pen is not a good idea. But I'll fix it. Lower jaw just got fresh on it. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a little bit of gill red. Good. He's gonna overdo it though. Okay, and you use this color to paint the gills. I don't have real gills on this fish, of course. And I can be super careful. Turn your fish however you got, you got to to get your gills. And then uh, paint your gills uh, red. You can see it pretty good from there. Uh, got my gill red.
That's good enough for me. bit of re-highlighting with the paint spray again. raise a little bit better. Flesh is not really a good color of flesh, so I'm going back every, over everything now. Uh, instead of the flesh, I'm getting it with white. Yeah, white looks better. My flesh is too pink.
now's a good time to touch up and get up. You don't destroy it this time. Easily done. Still don't look extremely right, but I'm not going to worry about it anymore. Yeah, I'd go ahead and clean your eyes off again. Now these fish come in a lot of different sh shades. Uh, this one was more of a gray one, but I have seen them really dark. So, I guess let your own particular fish be your guide. I think the same colors apply, no matter how dark or, or bright you want your fish. You know, uh, your pain grays, your blues, a little bit, and your red flesh. That's about it. Yeah, I'd use whatever dark color I have it available to, uh, you know, paint the card that pins on back. I usually always put a paint drop on it. Um, I've got. Uh, Payne's Gray, got plenty of that. I guess I'll use that. And basically just darkening the pins from the back. I guess it just shows you care a little bit. It's that easy. Basically the card going on back and just painting. So I'm giving it some color. I guess you could just leave it there, but a lot of people will. I don't know that. They want something to it. Now we're ready to gloss it. I've got my gloss top coat. Just gonna spray everywhere I got paint. Paint 
whispers. when you have them when you use reference other people's paint jobs and their recommendations. So it's better to always use a wide reference if possible. Too dark on that fin. Right. A little bit of black goes a long way, though. I do know that. So. No paint is gray, just black.
got to have a little more color than what it's got, you know. Yeah, that's a little bit better to me. Maybe a little bit more right in here. Yeah, I think that looks a little better. Yeah, just darken it up a little bit with black. That's, I'm gonna let that go. That's good enough for me. You gotta have a little bit of, <clears throat> it's a little bit darker, you know. Well, now I'm gonna throw some gloss on it again. Maybe put a couple more layers of it. Well, this this is what I got. Added a little bit of black to the back. 